Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. If you can see it, please let's read together. One to read. Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn ye not words. One more time. Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn ye not words. You have camped around this level spiritually. It's time to move higher. You have camped around this level financially. It's time to move higher. You have camped around this level in your career. It's time to move higher. He said you have compassed this mountain. It's a mountain. It's not a valley. So it's a level of results. But you have compassed this mountain long enough. I learned early in life and ministry that the, one of the greatest enemies to your advancement is your current success. Failures already have enough motivation and drive to rise. But for many believers, when we begin to have little successes here and there, spiritually speaking, career-wise, financially, that just deters us from rising to the height that we need to rise to. Apostle Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, he said, I press towards the mark, the mark, the mark of the high calling in Christ. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, scripture shows us that according to the dealings of God with men, the path of the just, it says, should be as the shining light shining more and more onto the perfect day that means as far as god is concerned your yesterday should never be better than your tomorrow now but we live in a time where you find that there's all kinds of balloon success balloon liftings in ministry and in life he was once anointed he once had a cutting edge ministry once upon a time this was the voice everybody was listening to are we together he was once a millionaire he was once passionate about the things of god he was once on fire for god he was once a responsible father a responsible husband he was once a ceo of a flourishing company many of us here can make reference to people industries things we say it in nigeria many of our loved ones who are aged from say maybe 50 60 they will say oh those days of railway until recently when it was resuscitated it's a terrible thing to only make reference to your past alone for motivation are we together but there are principles in exodus chapter 14 and verse 15 moses was with the nation of israel at the red sea and the lord said to moses they had met what looked like an obstacle that would stop them from advancing and making progress and he says the lord said unto moses wherefore criest thou unto me he says speak unto the children of israel that they go forward let me prophesy to someone here in the name of jesus the son of the living god i prophesy to you to your destiny to everything connected to you go forward go forward spiritually go forward financially go forward ministerially in the name of jesus the lord said to moses wherefore criest thou unto me he says speak to the children of israel tell them it is not my will that they stay in that position and prophesy to them that they go forward someone prophesy say i'm going forward turn it into a prayer in one minute i'm going forward i declare by the spirit of god i have come for this meeting and for this conference are you praying i'm going forward i intend to go forward nothing holding me back i'm going forward mention the areas take seriously this meeting in the name of jesus spiritually i make progress i move forward Shaliparu Satyata, advancement by the Spirit. No stagnation, no retrogression. Every area of my life answers to this prophecy. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 12, please, and verse 6. 
1 Samuel 12 and verse 6. Read it please when you have it on the screen. Ready? One to read. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought us your father up out of the land of Egypt. It is the Lord that advanced Moses. You just saw Moses moving forward regardless of obstacles you just saw aaron moving forward but here prophet samuel is saying make no mistakes people don't just move forward there is an invisible hand behind destinies behind ministries behind families that continue to push people forward may that hand begin to push you forward that where your father your mother your siblings could not get to may the invisible hand that moved moses moved aaron may it move your destiny forward in the name of jesus christ write this down please growth and advancement in any area of our lives must be intentional and it must be engaged growth and advancement in any area of our life number one must be intentional and it must be engaged you must engage the forces of advancement you must engage the systems of advancement you may have heard me say again and again in my teachings that god is the god of systems that means everything he does he creates a methodical approach to it so that when you engage that system it makes for continuity he created man only once as much as we know genesis 1 the account he created woman only once and created a system for continuity of the human race he planted the garden once and put in them the seed for its reproduction are we together now if you just know god as king of kings lord of lords wonderful savior and all of that that's wonderful but as far as your destiny is concerned you must know god as the god of systems he designed principles and deposited a dimension of his power and grace in those principles so that when you live your life in keeping with those principles you activate that dimension of his power this is why people who are not born again but are able to find this scripture based principles they can engage it and even though they do not acknowledge the god the giver of the principles the laws still work for them are we together so i want to walk you through some laws wherever we stop tonight would we'll stop and we'll pray i really intend that god will give us something of substance that it will not just be that you came for a meeting oh how was the meeting i hear apostle came wow it was powerful no that some of you from this meeting you can begin to share tears of joy because you know you have found the key listen great doors depend on small keys and if you don't have those keys you can stand in front of a great door forever i have spent my life searching for the keys that make things work in this kingdom it is terrible to lead a people when you are confused yourself you need precision you need clarity life will not always give you chance to dilly-dal and do trial and error the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully a time must come in your destiny where you handle the keys of the kingdom and you know you are not guessing you are not hoping you know that these are the keys that control specific outcomes this is what it means to be matured in the kingdom spiritual growth is measured by two indices number one the first biblical index for measuring spiritual growth is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the christ in experience this is the first biblical principle or biblical index you are not growing spiritually because you are staying long in church you are not even growing spiritually just because you are serving in church the first biblical index that measures a believer's growth is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the christ it says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you index number two 
your depth of understanding the ways of god your depth of comprehending the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom so you know you are growing spiritually to the degree to which light spiritual illumination your mind is open to understand the secrets of the kingdom are we together so we are going to pray and ask the lord to open our eyes as i run you through some of these principles listen these are not the opinions of a man our fathers and the patriarchs many of them today have joined the cloud of witnesses these are the principles that they engage in their lives you are not listening to cunningly devised fables these are not opinions of men these are doctrinal truths that the jealousy of god is behind them that everyone who dares to believe and engage these truths accordingly you will never be small you will never be mediocre it's a guarantee that i give you from whatever background and regardless of the prevailing circumstances you can walk your way like entering a lift and with shock and wonder first to yourself and then to all that care to see you you will rise as if the devil does not exist are we blessed number one the first principle that controls the advancement of men and women in this kingdom is called the power of vision the power of vision the power of vision prophet joel himself began to speak and he said when the spirit of god is poured upon all flesh look up please that the young men will see the young men will see visions the young men will see visions joel chapter 2 the young men will see visions proverbs 29 and verse 18 please give it to us the bible says and without vision the people perish or the people cast off restraint without vision the people it says perish that means that vision is so powerful that without it your life has no coordinates of growth and success these are irrefutable principles a vision is a clear picture a clear picture of your destination a clear picture of the next level of your life we live in a society that is full of maybe sincere people but many visionless people especially for us young people the average young man in this country has no idea of where they are going we allow status quo to decide what to do next i'm done with school what next the government says go and serve so i obey i'm done with service what next family puts pressure on you and says okay get a job and then get married and then have children and then maybe go abroad if you're tired of nigeria what a visionless way of living every great man in scripture and even through history were men who caught the vision for their destinies early there is timing with vision god bless you sir so good to see you thank you reverend vindiolu thank you early in life i've had the privilege of studying great fathers of faith in this nation and around the world i can tell you many of them some of them started preaching at age nine and did not stop till they saw the lord very clear vision our generation is full of distracted people and sometimes let me say this respectfully say partners meeting sometimes we over pamper our children and we over pamper people instead of opening them up early to the responsibility dimension of life we keep saying he's a child while they keep behaving foolish and it becomes a habit are we together yes at age 12 while the colleagues of jesus were roaming around he was already on a course i know why i came i don't have time to waste 
at age 12 he was with the doctors learning the principles of the law because he would use it in his ministry 12 there's a young businessman um i think now he should be in his early 30s called gray farah gray farah was a young gentleman who i think had become a millionaire by age 12. and he started selling stones so that people can you know just um just wage their paper or doors and people would drive him away and say you are a young black boy go away and he would leave them politely and that was how he started his business that has become an empire today warren buffett the great investor that we now celebrate one of the world's wealthiest ones he started investing i think at age eight or so and when he was interviewed and they say what's your greatest mistake he said my greatest mistake is that i didn't start investing early enough vision 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 gives you focus vision gives you the the legal grounds to say no to many things if you are not visionary you will not have the power and the courage to say no everything that comes to clamor on your attention when you are visionary you will have legitimate ground to say no to certain things are we together yes friends can call you and say what are you doing this weekend if you're free why don't you come around and you can say oh i am I'm, I'm grateful i thank god for the offer but right now i have a few books i must finish and these things these books are connected to what god is doing in my life in this season i appreciate you maybe another time and you don't feel guilty for it because you are making that sacrifice in honor of where you are going vision L let me tell you the truth and i submit to you one of the blessings of god in my life is that i found god and i found destiny early at a very 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 young age i was already clear about where i was going no confusion no dilly darling no second guessing are we together I was talking with a great man of god of recent and he looked at me and said apostle do you realize that among all of the people fathers and senior mentors and colleagues in ministry who relate with you who god has put around your life who are changing nations do you realize you're one of the youngest of them and i looked i said wow amazing it didn't occur to me i said well these are principles and if you walk in keeping with it then you will get blessed let me tell you a humorous story years ago a few, quite a few years ago i can't remember where i was traveling to and then the the class in the plane that i was seated all the people there were at least in their 60s or 70s and you know they just looked at this young man and people were passing and they would notice and say ah, apostle some of them would kneel down in the plane and greet and i could notice one of the people who was sitting down with such sarcasm who is this young man i'm sure maybe he's is maybe the son of some of these rich politicians or generals and i just nodded my head i said my god oga in my mind i said i respect you but if you have one tenth of my schedule you will collapse in one month don't you think that i'm just sitting here for nothing this was a position that although came by grace but was earned by diligence and knowledge we have a course in africa we frown at people who rise up early there is a spirit that celebrates lateness once god is helping you early it's as though it's a course you mean this lady just married at 22 why you mean at 24 he has built a house for his parents no let's research something must be wrong you mean this man of god is taking over territories how old is he 21 19 no way something he has a charm somewhere i reject that spirit from your life yeah. lamentations 3 27 shila pradus kebaruda shalahaskabadiata lamentations 3 27 everyone read it please it's projected one to read 
it is good for a man that he bear his yoke in his youth there is a timing to your life and your destiny every time is not convenient there are soccer players that you would see someone from you see these people don't many of you watch football some of you have your football clubs and all of that and you notice that when the adults and the players are coming there are little children that follow them too wearing jerseys they are already grooming the next generation of people the challenge with africa is that we do not think about the future we are not forward thinking we are only consuming what i will eat today dubai dubai about 10 or 15 years ago started preparing to make sure because they knew that they don't have any mineral resource they don't have anything they, they are now preparing if you know dubai is planning their next 50 60 years now i have the privilege of knowing a few people who are part of government there and so i'm not speaking from a standpoint of ignorance and we are here just thinking what we will eat i am happy comparing ourselves with ourselves i deliver you from mediocrity in the name of jesus i deliver you from the limitations of territory vision now write this down your vision is the big picture of where you are going God has spoken to you as a man of God. Go and raise a people of glory or greatness or power. That is a vision. But your vision must be broken into goals. Vision leads to goals. Goals lead to daily tasks. This is how you break it. When you fulfill your daily tasks, you will fulfill your short-term goals that will eventually lead you to fulfilling your vision I never get up in the morning sincerely so and just roam around wow this is the day the Lord has made Shadabala Katobas thank you Jesus and just roam around no way before I sleep or early in the morning when I get up I already plan my day I'm having this today I'm having that today it's better to plan and fail than to not plan is more honorable to plan most believers do not pay attention to these weightier matters of the kingdom and they find out that while they are doing well in things like prayer bible study their lives and destinies remain stagnated because these are forces of advancement that have no prejudice they have no biases whatsoever everybody say vision make up your mind to be visionary let there be something that your life is about if i look at you right now and say what are you doing right now you should be able to tell me i'm preparing for an extraordinary life so what are you doing what face are you in right now i'm, I'm reading books there are books that i'm reading congratulations you're making progress what are you doing now i'm opening myself to a system of mentorship and learning wow what are you doing now i'm serving while i'm learning there has to be something your life is about are we together yes write this down vision defines your relationships when you know where you are going it will define who goes with you if you do not have vision it, you will not be able to edit the relationships that come to your life anybody should not be with you on that journey any good person should not be there just because they are good does not mean they are for you there are many good things you will have to leave behind if you intend to go forward it's not just evil things there are many good things you have to leave for instance watching television for 10 hours for no reason for instance being on social media from morning till night with no definite purpose for instance just sitting around and just talking nothing is wrong with that except that it is at the detriment of your destiny can i tell you this the unit of destiny is time whatever takes your time has taken part of your destiny the unit of destiny is time 
I'm deep in love with you, Abba Father. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. My heart it longs for you, precious Jesus. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. From the time I received the mandate of my assignment and I knew the gravity of where God was taking me to, I made up my mind that there's no distraction. Listen, if your destiny is to carry a Bible, you don't need to do exercise and build muscles. You can carry a Bible with one hand. Is that true? If your destiny is to lift this pulpit, you may need a bit of exercise. But if your destiny is to carry this house, you don't just need to do exercise you need to find all the machines that can help you lift that house so you see when god defines your destiny the devil will surround you with people who are not carrying what god wants you to carry and if you exercise at their rate you will not grow god is calling you to be an apostle and a prophet to the nations and you are having people who are just praying for 10 minutes and pray today and ask for forgiveness after two weeks and resume carelessness again and you are joining them with the kind of mandate on your life when you go to the group where you belong you will find out that there are minimum standards to carry this grace can i tell you this there are certain anointings the day they land your life there is a minimum level of prayer or prayer time there is a minimum level of fellowship time if not i assure you it will lift believe me when i tell you this maintaining the anointing is harder than receiving it have they given you a car of 10 million and you are afraid of that car because you know that one tire of that car alone huh can service one tire one correct tire genuine tire of that car if you buy all four tires it will buy another car so when you are receiving that car as a gift you must begin to think and say while i'm receiving this i must know that the maintenance of it whereas you will service a car with maybe three four five thousand for that car you are using fifty thousand naira to service a car they will tell you the engine oil is different they will tell you they don't sell the parts one by one you have to buy a whole set that means you must be carefully managing it because if that part spoils you will buy both the one you need and the one you don't need is everybody around your life going where you are going there are many people in our lives who have nothing to lose so they can afford to be careless while they distract you who has something to lose some of them come from families already that respectfully speaking maybe their parents have stolen money bought lands for them but you are coming from a family of nine people and you are the first person to rise and you are reading at their rate you are praying at their rate whereas you have covenants and altars that are waiting to bring you down they come from a family where a prophet has done the work of prayer and broken the foundations they can afford to be careless and go scot free those around your life are they going where you are going we are discussing vision this is just key number one you must make up your mind that from today i set my face as a flint there has to be something my life is about when i wake up in the morning i give god glory but my life must be about something my greatest joy today is to see that my 24 hours I invested pursuing my assignment, revealing Jesus to a generation, enthroning him, seeing that the gates of hell continue to be torn down for as long as I'm alive. And this is what I will do till the day that I see his face. Hmm. All my days on earth, I will await. The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world will satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry 
All my days on earth I will await The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry Vision, vision That you go back to your house today And tear some books away Get out of my destiny I've wasted enough time There are four seasons in every man's life. Listen to me very carefully. Season number one is the morning stage of your life. That is the first 25 years of your life. The first 25 years of your life is the morning stage. That is the stage where you are permitted to make mistakes and go scot-free. That is the stage when you can learn. The second stage is called the afternoon stage. The next 25 years of your life from 26 years to 50 is the afternoon stage that is the stage of maximum achievement like the sun shines brightest in the afternoon the next stage is called the evening stage of your life that is the stage for legacy where you can turn back and now begin to institutionalize your success and now mentor younger generations coming the next 50 years the next 25 years the last stage of your life is called rest that when you get to that point you should have finished if you utilize the time given to you well by the time you get to the last quarter of your life it should be you just enjoying the faithfulness of god that you can stand and say truly i have poured myself like a drink offering i have fought the good fight can i tell you this do not be deceived that you are young is a deception from the pit of hell from the moment you are conscious of your environment you are matured enough to be responsible in my world maturity is not 18 years in my world maturity is the day you can understand the implication of cause and effect from that day in my world you are matured joash was a king at age eight josiah was a king at age nine There are teenagers around the world changing the world. There are young people around the world changing the world, shifting systems, mentoring governments, introducing policies that are bettering the lives of people. Please, let's wake up in the name of Jesus. When you are an eagle, don't fly with birds. When you are an eagle, Pay the price to look for where eagles are even if you don't know how to fly just find where eagles are if you can see other eagles flying you will become what you are seeing are we blessed i had the opportunity a few days ago to speak with a great man that I respect the group managing director of one of the banks in this nation and we're having a conversation with him and he told me he said apostle my concern now is not myself again my concern is not even my generation our generation has failed my concern now I'm looking for young men who are serious visionary and we want to see how we can invest in them to see that they rise and become something and I looked at him, I said, how many young people know that there are billionaires like this who are looking for visionary young men to pour their lives, to pour their experiences, to pour their pain? Can I tell you this? The elderly have wisdom, but they don't have time to correct it again. The young people have time, but they don't have wisdom to make right decisions. It is conferences like this bridge that time and wisdom component make up your mind that in the name of jesus you will be visionary and you start becoming visionary by going to buy a notebook hello if you cannot show me a quality notebook 
that represents where you are going to i don't take you serious believe me right for these words are faithful and true i have my notebooks today from when i began to work with god i have all of them every time i go for my end of year retreat i carry them they are not too heavy they have made me what i am i will carry them to the secret place 15 years ago what did you tell me and i see some of these things come to pass lord what are you telling me now for the next 10 years for the next 15 years right for these words are faithful and true get a get a theme for your life why are you alive summarize your life for me in one sentence what is it about lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day why for the night cometh the night cometh like faith cometh the night cometh when no man will be able to walk again hear me whether you like it or not a day will come you will not have the energy and time and the vibrancy that you have now you see that a dear man of god we're having a conversation and he spoke to me he said ah apostle this is your schedule start paying attention to your health oh. and i said it's true the holy spirit has told me that i should be resting because in my in my wonderful world i forget that time is going and me too i'm making progress and that vibrancy that we started and and the passion of souls and right now god is saying you started early so that you can walk in wisdom you see some of our fathers now they may not have all that energy to travel around but they spend their youthful days building systems are we together you will not always have the time can i tell you this let me can i use you please come my dear come sir this man both of you come watch this please stand here and you stand here watch this do you know let's assume that this lady maybe is a student in a university or when she was a student or when she started out in life she would tell you she had maybe eight hours at that time you can do eight hour stretch you can do certain kinds of meetings with god are we together now this man may have the luxury of time to serve god to do this because there's not much right now but move to their 10 years and let's say this is now a mother with five children do you think you can do eight hour stretch just like that when you need to discuss with your husband now remember at that time it was just you and the holy ghost holy ghost is me and you today and he says you are welcome but now it's not the holy ghost again it's not even your husband again your children don't care that you are going spiritually that's none of their business they didn't ask you to come since you brought them here you take full responsibility for their joy are we together they don't care whether you are going through storms in your life you are the only one who knows what you are going through in the office your children will come and grab you and say daddy let's play let's dance whereas there's fire on the mountain you are about to lose your job tomorrow you need 10 hours with god and your child is crying say don't go and god says stay there because that child is learning what abba means leave your problem when you were on campus i told you generate energy because days will come days will come you will not always have this time if i waited for this level of my life to carry fire i would have gone down since now you have the time nobody knows you go and hide behind that tree you are preparing and gaining stamina for the days ahead madam god has told you you will have five children begin to pray and prepare lay your hands on your womb no stubborn child will come through this womb in the name of jesus i will not give birth to arm robbers I'll wait until the child is collapsing your your bp and then you start running around looking for what to do prayer can enter your future and wait for you there are we together
now ask all these people this guy now is a ceo of a company a leader of over four five thousand people the the burden of leadership alone he may return back home 11 30 in the night but he's now drawing strength from those days i respond to an average of 500 to 600 text messages every day can you imagine that some of you send text messages and say apostle is it that you are not responding as i am now like this my phone is on flight mode if it's not on flight mode it will interrupt this mic calls come in an average of one to two minutes in my phone that is the price i want to go on a retreat now i have to find a way to run away in a way that people will not know because if somebody and sometimes praise god okay fine we, we have the sound so don't 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 be distracted do you know sometimes the hotel i want to go and rest now as soon as i get there the person sees me and say thank you jesus sir i've been praying to see you i said ah oh god what in the world is this now i thought i was coming to hide sometimes i'm sitting and the cleaner comes to clean or maybe dress the bed ah, maybe looks at a jotter with my face in a program somewhere and the person is already waiting by evening you hear a knock cap sorry sir don't be offended i clean this place are you apostle joshua sir? and he will run and tell his colleagues and call other people in town that's why i stopped snapping with people because they will now snap and put it on social media guess who i met in this city now people start calling and say ah, but apostle you are in this city and i'm aware now did i ever know that it would be a luxury to have time for yourself it for the journey is far my dear people eat for the journey is very far everybody say vision, vision. one more time say vision. vision so here is a mother with five children and you know in africa it's not only your children that are your children especially if god helps you you are joking you cannot whether you like it or not your neighbor's children are your children too where you come from your family the clan they are your children too so you have all this responsibility just when you want to rest they remind you remember you are the firstborn there is a meeting in the family there are things to resolve somebody has been stealing in the family and your attention is needed you say just tell the person i'll pray for him say no you have to be there while you are doing that they call you and say where are you there's an executive meeting to come while that is happening your wife says you know you are not giving me time it's not fair read your bible the bible says husbands love your wives while you are doing that your children are saying daddy but we've not been seeing you it's not fair while you are doing that they are calling you in church and say sir the committee you are part of this is three weeks meeting you are not there while that is happening all the people you mentor and help are saying sir did we offend you we have been praying to come and visit you your old school fellowship your old school association they are begging to come and you stand in front of the mirror and say should i die and then god says me too i'm waiting oh you know? i've been waiting too listen to me don't just get excited i hope you are getting what i'm teaching listen women will tell you i'm waking you up this night if you plan to have four children spaced within two two years or so do you know you are going to spend about eight to ten years of your marriage just giving birth? I'm not talking of raising those you have given birth to. Just giving birth. Eight to ten years of your destiny has gone into giving birth. If every child leaves your house at 25 and you have four children, calculate what your age will be when your last child will be final to leave your house. That is if they keep the rules of growth and become responsible early. Are we together this is a very serious thing i'm waking your eyes to see these are the things that give parents bp and they sit down and say is it that i failed in life i raised five children the the youngest of them is 39 they are all still in my house no vision no growth no nothing and yet the man who said i used to be a missionary god i served you let me tell you where you now understand what i mean that without vision the people literally perish
so while you keep celebrating christmas after christmas you are growing you are growing time is going oh one day i will i will think about it this this story preachers are saying no problem there were people who had the opportunity that some of us had but they misused their opportunity because they thought opportunities will come every day like that and right now they are in positions that sometimes do you know every time i meet fathers and elderly people the first thing they tell me is apostle we are proud of you for finding god on time please keep that and talk to people and say please find god fast and stay with him find destiny fast and stay with it vision will direct your life vision will take you to the geography of your assignment vision will direct everything in your life vision will even tell you how many children you should have are we together now if god tells you you are going to have two boys and two girls and one child of those boys will be a prophet by the time you have two girls and one boy you already know that there's one more coming if there's no fighting and there's no discussion you already know because god said the second child male child will be a prophet and so you trust him to finance all the children and bless them they will not be a load to you do you know there are certain assignments that when you have god goes as far as telling you how many children you can have it's his recommendation you can disobey but based on the burden of that assignment he tells you this is the number for your efficiency i pray for you may god open your eyes tonight to the matters of your destiny look at me i see a number of us here and i know that a number of us here may probably be students or just be those who just finished can i tell you i use the example of this great woman of god here and i'm challenging you the time you have today you will not have tomorrow again somebody called me after one month of marriage he says tired i say you are joking you are joking you are where are you going i mean you are a christian you stay there the bible says you will stay there I said why you know just felt her life her everything her life is scattered the man is ungrateful she didn't know he was like this wouldn't have. I said, look just frog it out you will it will work just take it easy learn forgive yourself say i'm sorry as many times you just keep moving because i tell you she wanted her yesterday and the convenience of it but she didn't know it's gone forever you cook breakfast before he's done eating you are thinking lunch before he's done eating, all the visitors come. You are thinking dinner. And may God help you that you're a man of God's wife. Just when you are having an emergency meeting happens in the house. There are times you will look for mattress and turn your parlor into a bedroom. Turn the other room into a bedroom. You will sit down in the kitchen as if you are cooking and that's where you sleep. It's the sacrifice of destiny. You must be visionary. You must be visionary you must be visionary in the name of jesus christ please enter a covenant with your destiny tonight that as far as my destiny is concerned i will be intentional about it don't mind people who will tell you don't listen to preachers they are just talking nonsense they will not be there 30 years added to your age today many of them would fail some will be in prisons many of them do you know something some of these people who mislead you they will repent later on and meet somebody to pray for them for mercy and while they are rearranging their life you are there suffering the confusion of their error god bless you sir bless you man thank you vision number two are we still together there's only one who the second principle of advancement according to scripture is the power of knowledge and understanding the power of knowledge and understanding this is a kingdom that functions by light this is a kingdom that functions by knowledge your dominion and your excelling in life is highly predicated 
on the degree and the quality of spiritual illumination you have and then the degree of useful information that you have everything in this life depends on knowledge ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 read with me believers ready it's projected one to read the labor of the foolish uh-huh weary yet every one of them why because he knoweth not how to go to the city it didn't say there is no city the city is there but you must learn the art of navigating your way through the city the labor of the foolish weary yet everyone with no exception because he knoweth not how to go to the city psalm 45 and verse 4 psalm 45 and verse 4 and in thy majesty he says ride prosperously in destiny because of truth ride gallantly fearlessly because you have truth in your hand the keys that can open any closed door listen to me investment in knowledge is quality investment investment in knowledge first spiritual knowledge then number two useful secular knowledge galatians 2 verse 2 apostle paul said i went up by revelation i went up you don't go down with revelation i went up by revelation it takes revelation to go up i went up in business by revelation i went up in ministry by revelation it is powerful to know what to do the bible says and jesus himself knew what to do when you are confronted with the challenges of life it is important for you to know what to do are we together to know what to do you need light you need understanding you need illumination you are a businessman you need to understand everything about the financial realm you need to understand leadership you need to understand organization if you're a man of god you need to understand everything because you will, they will be needed at one point or the other in your life i talk to diplomats i talk to business people i talk to politicians captains of industry i talk to fellow ministers i talk to people from all walks of life and it is mandated that you are intelligent enough to be able to translate spiritual realities to a context that people can relate with if your relevance stops only when or your relevance is captured only when you are behind the pulpit you are not valuable enough i'm a student of knowledge I study first my Bible and then relevant materials from men and women with proven track records I don't have the time to dilly-dal I don't have the time to guess I'm very intentional about producing results in my life I'm passionate about knowing the things I do not know when I find areas of ignorance in my life I'm not embarrassed by it I sit down like a student of knowledge and then I learn never be embarrassed when you find out you do not know or you do not know enough are we together recently i was on my way back from a trip and then uh, coincidentally i met with a dear man of god and um we got talking just a flight of about uh, maybe 35 40 minutes and we're having a discussion and i told him i said wow you have a great tv ministry talk to me what what can you teach me about tv ministry television ministry and in 35 to 40 minutes 
i got i got compressed knowledge and enlightenment it would have saved me many mistakes and probably millions of naira making me see ignorance is costly it looks cheap but it will cost you more than knowledge are we together and he opened me up to that body of knowledge and now i have the enlightenment enough what you do not know can destroy you it says arise shine isaiah 60 for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i always like to quote it from amplified it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you they keep you there because of darkness rise to a new life hallelujah i went up by revelation i have routines for giving myself knowledge every day my head will not touch the bed in sleep until there is a requisite curriculum of knowledge do you know what it takes to prepare one sermon you have two or three meetings and their topics are east and west and you have to be prepared it's not like you are teaching the same thing please let's kill the spirit of laziness and embrace knowledge embrace knowledge specific knowledge be passionate how does this work how does life work how does finances work how does spiritual growth work how does leadership work why is it that everybody i lead is angry with me and they don't seem to be able to be loyal to me there is something about leadership you do not know so you go back to your drawing board the parable of the ten virgins is said go and buy from them that sell there are people that sell buy the oil buy wisdom you buy it with the currency of honor you buy with the currency of meekness you buy with the currency of passion find people who have what your destiny requires and learn one thing is needful martha martha you are worried and offended about many things but one thing is needful to sit at the master's feet you want to eat bread you want to eat fish sit down that's the instruction tell them to sit down i'm about to feed them with bread i'm about to feed them with fish but you will not receive it standing you must sit down to sit at the master's feet job 29 job 29 from verse 1 look at the secret behind the exploits of job moreover job continued his parable and said to oh that i were in the months past as in the days when god preserved me i like you to read verse 3 and verse 4 when his candle did what shine upon my head and when by his light i walk through the darkness so there are two kinds of light there is light that shines on your path but there is light that shines on your head you need both of them if you only have the light that shines on your path you are in trouble it first shines on your head before it shines on your path as a result as i was in the days of my youth hallelujah when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle now a compendium of the exploits five he said when the almighty was yet with me and my children were around about me keep reading verse six when i washed my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil when i went through the gate please go back to seven it says when i went out through the gate of the city when i prepared my seat in the street next verse the young men by reason of the knowledge that i had when they saw me they hid in shame the reference of comparison was too much and the aged when they saw me elders don't stand up for children but they had to stand up to acknowledge you're a young man where did you get this depth of illumination verse 10 verse 9 now the princes who were mentored before they got to that position when i showed up they were ashamed to speak because of the quality of what was upon my lips it says and they laid their mouth their hands on their mouth the nobles held their peace 
and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth when the ear heard me it blessed me and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me stop there exploits by reason of knowledge please damage ignorance in your life damage ignorance write a list of the things you do not know and go and search for relevant materials that address those things there are teachings i have listened to more than two thousand times one thing it's true I'm, I'm not lying i fear god <laughs> behind every glory brothers and sisters there is a story next time you see great people do not join the bandwagon of ignorant people who think they were just lucky no no on easy lies the head they say that where's the crown is god blessing someone here go for knowledge go for knowledge my church is not growing go for knowledge my destiny is not growing go for knowledge I'm beating my wife every time and saying sorry. I'm beating her again and saying sorry. Go for knowledge. Why is my life poor? No favor. Doors are closed. Go for knowledge. Why am I a young person and everybody in my age group hates me? Everybody seems to gossip and talk about me. I'm a sincere person. Go for knowledge. There is what you do not know when poor people came to jesus they came to harass him oh don't let us go like this when wealthy people came they said good master we take responsibility what should i do to inherit eternal life i, I know that i will I, it will require something from me are we together holy spirit you are welcome Fill this temple with your presence because he's lifting us in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to my destiny in a fresh way. Fill this temple. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you, I wait on you. And Dotham prospered because he prepared his way before the Lord. Pay the price. Don't pity yourself. You may cry, but pay the price. Don't pamper yourself. Wake up in the night when others are sleeping you open that book in the name of jesus these are the secrets of the kingdom that make men champions recently i went for a meeting and there was a great man of god there and he came to sell some books and i told my protocol i said go and tell the booksellers from the top to the bottom they should pack all the books like that and just put the man said oh apostle i will give you discount if you're buying i said me i'll be stupid to collect discount with from you with what i know now no i will not give to god what will cost me nothing are you willing to pay that price someone met me and said apostle why do you give your teachings free you have lost hundreds of millions of naira that would have come to you as a blessing for your intellectual property i said that's how much i love my generation that's how much so that there is no excuse 
so that someone will say ah it's too expensive no that's how much god is allowing us to have access listen as at the time that i started giving people free teachings you didn't get teachings free no there were cds that you would have to buy you will pay for it and i said no and people advise me they say apostle no 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 don't do this you will need this money for yourself to run ministry i said no god gave me an instruction and i agreed with god let it bless the people at least for this season of my life it's a sacrifice when you make up your mind to go for knowledge i guarantee you regardless your tribe regardless your background regardless the limitations a day will come the nations will stand in awe will stand at attention there are nations i never knew existed in this world i consider myself to be a bit knowledgeable but i've been amazed at the things that people do when you have knowledge and insight it is my prayer that you will invest in knowledge knowledge that will speak in your life it says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all that your profiting will appear unto all that your profiting will appear unto all i was to have a meeting with some business people and when a particular businessman in this nation was invited to say look um there's a great man of god he wants to talk to us and he said pastors what what did they know about finance and someone just pleaded with him and said even if you can't receive any come at least you will receive prayer and the man sat down and i knew that they, they were you could see this sense of sarcasm please we've already made money we will come and help you people you these people and i looked at him in my mind i said just give me five minutes of your destiny be patient there is no shame when knowledge comes study to show yourself approved a workman that needed not to be ashamed you don't just drive shame by casting it john 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not within five ten minutes of talking and discussing and showing them certain things and showing them statistics and discussing i could see the shock and the wonder on that man's face at the end of the meeting he was not even interested in the prayer and he looked and said apostle i will give you all my numbers are you on whatsapp are you i said i'm not on any of those things he said, so how do i reach you i said find out how the rest reach me When you have only money, you don't have much. It's true. You are greater when you have the capital that buys money. Listen to my message, true riches. The mystery of the capital that buys money. Please go for knowledge. Brothers and sisters, go for knowledge get teachings buy the truth sell it not sit down many of us buy books but we don't read them we get messages but we don't read them we don't listen to them up until recently maybe maybe this year or so quite honestly speaking there is almost none of my messages i have not listened to i preached it but i still listen to it and when Joshua Selman is praying and prophesying on that message. If I'm alone, I get down on my knees and I lift up my hands to receive. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. 
the light of the sun will be like the light of the moon and the light of the moon will shine seven times as bright when Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world he heals all the bruises inflicted by this world hallelujah God is speaking to you and he's telling you it's time to rise. You're not just going to advance by luck. Stop getting angry at successful people. Stop, stop getting intimidated by people who have paid their price. Have regard for the sacrifices of great people and begin to write your own story. From where thou art, lift up your eyes. make up your mind that i will not be ignorant fight ignorance like you fight sin fight ignorance like you fight satan fight ignorance like you fight an enemy who has come to steal from you because it truly is an enemy while you are seated i'd like you to lay hands on your head a symbol of your glory and pray in one minute father take away ignorance from my life are you laying hands on your head and prophesy Please pray. Harada shalaka tapranda gade balatata. It's time to move forward by light, by knowledge, specific, exact knowledge required for my destiny. hallelujah praise the lord can we still touch on one or two more are you tired many years ago i attended a meeting it was a very very exclusive minister's conference and when the man of god was teaching ah, we were tired it was as if you would not stop he was teaching and teaching and later he just looked and truly everything he was saying was powerful the man was from ghana he was a ghanaian american it was my first time listening to a man with a balance of spirituality of the holy ghost intellectual soundness a profound sense of humor we spent nine hours in that conference not break come back break come back you whatever you brought you eat it there once in a while they will sell they would uh, bring uh, uh what they call it popcorn or whatever and before you eat it fire comes again from the altar you drop that popcorn and think about your life very great men and women of god it was a powerful conference very powerful this man shared things shared things that that literally changed my life you know the kind of conference that when you are done you stand at the door as if they injured you you just stand like this apostle how are you it's all right. I'll see you later and you are thinking so this is how i would have messed up my life you came full of knowledge geo came full of knowledge and that man just damaged our ignorance shredded it into pieces most of the men of god were saying thank god is only us here that we know ourselves thank god at least we can cry and we know that this is among us it's amazing that when you have not seen greater light what you have looks like light very powerful keys and principles 
that just change our lives that walk like fire i had a conversation during the lockdown with one of um a man of god who is he's in td jake's most inner circles and then we sat down at dinner with him and i said teach me share with me something that you have learned about ministry from this man and within 15 to 20 minutes he shared with me something that literally blew my mind you know many of us that god has helped to walk in some extreme measures of the anointing of grace of revelation is very difficult to receive because you are wandering from that standpoint of light what what else do i need to learn <laughs> when that man was done with me in about 20 to 30 minutes i said my god i was i was i was just typing this thing as if they asked me to write it if not they will flog me it is revelation that takes us up in this kingdom please i want you to learn this without revelation you are grounded shamefully grounded there is what you know that can take you beyond the limitations of your background and i pray in the name of jesus that god will open us to those dimensions in the name of jesus let me give us one more and then we pray are we together number three the power of superior beliefs what we call the power of a transformed mind proverbs philippians i meant to say chapter 4 and verse 8 let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light look carefully at that scripture let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy land. Prophesy to yourself. That's what is happening to you tonight. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy land. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise read with me think on these things it defines the boundary of your thought life think on these things the things that are true listen the first man of god to challenge my mind and my thought process was dr miles munro of blessed memory when i began to explore his materials and began to receive mentorship from him my life changed you've heard my story that i wrote letters to different men of god across the nations of the world telling them about the call of God in my life and just what they would want me to do dr. miles Munro replied me back handwritten and that time I'm not sure that internet was even a serious thing you would go and sleep in a cafe trying to even just open a page and he sent it by post and it came to me put details there you can reach me you can do this and that and that it was a precious time of knowledge he exposed me to how terrible my thinking was and it was not an insult he was right because our mindset are framed first from our backgrounds we come from a sociological context people are programmed number one genetically and number two which is the greater part environmentally that our minds are programmed environmentally chances are that all you know today and all you do came as a product of your environment and you would think that just because you are growing into adulthood those things should fade they remain there as strongholds 
there are three or four channels that feed our minds number one your background number two culture culture where you come from there are unhealthy dimensions of culture that have planted thought processes in us that are not consistent with the ways of god number three your past experiences your past experiences can plant in you a thought pattern that can interfere with what god is doing in your future number four your association and your relationships you can be surrounded by mediocres men and women who do not believe the possibilities that are resident in the christ and over time subliminally you can receive some of these impartations from those people and your mindset become very very depraved are we together when you come to the kingdom the assignment of the holy ghost among many other things is to begin to culture your thinking to become the mind of christ the bible says philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus there is a mindset requirement listen carefully there is a mindset requirement for your destiny it's true how many of you here are science-based by science-based you studied or are studying anything that has to do with science hallelujah oh it's very difficult now i wanted to make an illustration but i'll do my best to explain something to you please look up this mind you see that god gave you works like an antenna literally like an antenna please look at me you need to learn this that your mind works like an antenna are we together now when we used to have radio sets that you pick and tune you know those radios i'm talking about now you just need to stand around um a particular uh what do we call it now circumference and once you are there you can start tuning is that true provided the mast or the antenna somewhere and in there's a little device on your radio that helps you to tap signals and you can be tuning and then you come close to a particular frequency that's that principle came from god's own creation please look at me everything in life this is not some scientology i'm teaching you i'm teaching you the whole counsel of god because i want you to prosper and i'll share with you a little story and we're done your mind literally exhibits magnetic properties literally that means it is consistently attracting physical realities to you that are consistent with your thought pattern understand what i'm teaching you that means for everything you desire in life there is if you would call a frequency like when you want to tune to fm they say this 1.5 that's the frequency if you want to hear anything from that radio station go to that frequency your prosperity has a frequency listen to me your destiny helpers have a frequency your influence has a frequency your assignment when you tune yourself to that frequency ah uh, something will start happening to you your mind will start magnetizing dimensions that are consistent to the frequency of your mental growth this is true let me let me give you an example can i bring out some money will you be offended i hope you will not say we're doing carnal things here let me share come this man likes money i just said come and the way you stand there go back to your seat just hold it my friend you come too watch this you go back and okay you stand my dear for all of you just come i want to do an illustration watch this okay so that that's enough let's have now lift up what you are holding now watch this god this is me here it is in my destiny to have this it's not only money you can leave anything else you have so that they don't think we're just talking money maybe a phone or whatever now all these things 
are the things I need for my destiny. Now I have prayed and in my visions I have seen that these things will come. But there is a mental, a requisite mental frequency that will attract this to me. This is already on earth. It's not coming. It's on earth already. But it cannot come to me because at this level of thought development, I do not have the power to draw it. It is the very force of the spirit that coordinates this thing. This guy is supposed to be my partner in ministry. But because I have not grown to that level, it cannot draw him. He's in this city. He's around. He will pass me every day. Now, while I begin to pray, as I'm studying those books, you start coming. Look at what is happening. My mind is upgrading and is drawing this person and what he has. I am in one room my destiny in the name of jesus my helper this guy now shows up and says sorry um i came to look for somebody he's a neighbor and he says it's like i know your face somewhere ah you were in this school he did not just come there is a magnetic property please understand this if i stop there these are the levels of people who will help me then i continue my growth as i'm reading books something is happening are you seeing this now from where you are you can lift up your eyes and start to rain this guy is coming in the name of jesus my mindset is growing now look at this the lord told me you will have a phone in your life but that phone is in the hand of someone and that someone will not come at this level of mental development so while i begin to pray and grow my phone is on its way coming now i'm not aware because this is happening somewhere in my environment but the magnetic power of god's word that can divide between the bones and the marrow i tell you it will draw this person from anywhere in the world come and bring that person to me now when you see this quality of people in my life you say apostle where did you have you heard them tell a man of god like that have you seen people that it looks like all excellent people look for them the best keyboardist is looking for them they don't have that power to go and call so they stay back and use the laws of mental development and as you grow your church your group starts to grow to reflect you listen now I, I want to share something a bit personal i remember when i started ministry sometimes i didn't even know that they used to collect honorarium and sometimes i would preach preach and they would wait till i'm climbing a bike to go and then they could just squeeze out maybe five thousand and say man of god don't worry you hear from us again and please can we shake and they just drop it in my hand now i i would have gotten angry and said don't ever invite me if you are going to give me five thousand or ten thousand the problem was not them the problem was me as i began to grow this law started forcing them to change it there are many things we were god saved us the energy of pursuing things and said you stay and grow i assure you that when you pay the price to grow you will draw all kinds of things and i this is a mystery when i am lifted what happens so when your mind is lifted what happens anything that is lifted draws it's not just christ alone when your mind is lifted when your mentality is lifted the higher you rise the stronger the pull now i want to say this respectfully if i stand here right now and say people i'm hungry i need something to eat or i'm looking for maybe hundred thousand naira to buy shoe one of you here you will love god and you love me enough you will stand up and say what did you say sir let's go to my own shop you will open it and say sir pick and while i'm picking you are blessing god that i'm picking if i came to you 20 years ago and i say open your shop my mindset will make you fight me this is the danger of premature manifestation because you want to draw things that have not come by growth now i can find a way of forcing my way to get this it will only be a rubber ring it will go back and leave you in shame and you will come back to the true state that reflects your mind 
that's this is the mystery behind short-term success you can you can create emotion around but life will bring you back to where you truly belong hallelujah you believe what i'm sharing with you yes so i keep growing i can stop here and say i already have some results but somebody say no way shout no way i keep growing and there is more in store for me keep coming sir and while this is happening now you look at my life and my destiny and it's full of good things it is not just my prayer alone it is my thinking because the bible says god will do exceeding abundantly above all i ask or think my thinking is a prayer warrior it is not only my speaking many people pray well but something is wrong with our minds the law of mental transformation the more i remain at that mindset this guy will remain this guy will remain so you find out that if this guy is a partner for instance in my ministry and he's bringing 10 10 million or 100 100 million and something happens to him the day he now says okay sir i've tried i'm relocating to canada i don't cry and say ah, i've lost a partner that mindset instantly will ensure there is a replacement it's a law my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory he will put his angels charge over me jehovah jireh cares for me jehovah jireh cares for me jehovah jireh cares for me are we blessed so right here in asaba i proved it with my life and i said right from zaria we will call the nations to come i'm not telling you what i've not proven zaria is a village right from there people come from all over the world they climb bikes coming from us they climb everywhere they sit down for hours with the inconveniences and they are more than grateful this is it it was only the ministry that was in zaria the impact was global are, are you getting what i'm saying now yes. god did something that blessed me do you know that I will tell you this sincerely this is a partners meeting i want to encourage you from march when the lockdown started till now the seeds and the blessings that have come into my life and the ministry 10 years of our work combined combined is not close to it the lockdown no service no i say 10 years just listen to what i'm telling you If you believe what I share with you, don't think I don't know what I'm saying. You'll be making a mistake. Believe me. When God began to work on my mindset, I now read the supernatural power of a transformed mind. It's a book you will want to read by Bill Johnson. But the real miracle of I was changing but i really did not understand what was happening the details of what was happening the miracle in my life as far as understanding the mind as a system for success came in 2015. please sit down guys god bless you the seed is yours please go with it you don't give and take it's more blessed to give than to receive god bless you now watch this one night i sat down and i was praying and suddenly the power of god came upon me and i found myself typing a name 
that I did not know and I had never met. The name that I typed was called Earl Nightingale. Had never heard of such a name, had never met such a man. What is this that I'm typing? And suddenly a 19 minutes video pops up and I listen to that. Today, may God forgive me if I'm lying. I think I've listened to that little audio at least without exaggeration 4,000 times. The way that I had people to mentor and build me in the area of ministry. Now, here was a man who was specifically building my understanding, the dynamics of the mind. I found the secret I'd been looking for. So this was what distinguished weak people and bless people this was the mystery that brought wealth and lifting and influence for people and then i went to the bible and it was as if god opened my eyes from genesis to revelation i saw the same thing there and i said why didn't i see this for as he thinketh in his heart help me he didn't say so he will become so he already is let's look at one scripture we're rounding up numbers chapter 13 from verse 25 to 33 and they returned from searching the land after 40 days let's hurry up and they went and came to moses and aaron and to all the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word to them unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land uh-huh and they told him and said we came to the land whither thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it 28 nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great and moreover we saw the children of anak there 29 we're reading to 33 and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. 30. And Caleb said, Hey, I went to all of this drama you are speaking as if you went alone. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able this is the mindset of someone all of them went and brought a report and caleb kept quiet and was listening to all the nonsense they were saying and he said i was there too let us go up at once we are able to overcome it 31 but the men that were with him said we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we read on and they brought up what an evil report what is an evil report a report that is not consistent with the word of god you came with a mindset that negates what god said that he that cometh from above is above all and then he says that they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land though which we have gone through which we have gone to search is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature verse 33 and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come from of the giants and we were in our what we were in our i hope you know that you don't see with your eyes you see through your eyes the mind is what coordinates that the eye is just a passage for your sight you see through your eyes but the dynamics happens in your mind have a correct eye and let your mind be blind whom the god of this world had blinded not their eyes their minds it says we were in our own sight as grasshoppers satan did not call them grasshoppers god did not call them grasshoppers their mindset called them grasshoppers And so we were in their sight. I reject this for my life. 
I will not call myself what God has not called me. When he says I am from above, I believed. When I was in that little city of Zaria, and he told me that from where thou art, you can lift up your voice and command the attentions of the nations, I believed him. I believed him. Stupid enough to believe him. To transit my mindset. From that one little room, a day will come the nations will call upon the name of the Lord. Don't tell me I don't know what I'm saying. So when I tell you you can be great, it is true that you get to a point where kings will stand up for you. Nobles. I look at my life today and every day I pray for myself. I said, Lord, let pride and, and vain glory not disturb this your son. Because you see, there is a level to which you rise. It almost becomes like human worship. But you get to a point where you look at the excellency, the things that I learned, gradually, gradually, God began to draw and bring a particular notable family in the world. I will not mention the name. A few, maybe a month or two ago, very prominent family globally they were about to do something with their inheritance the property that the loved ones left for them and a quarrel came up and all of them unanimously in the family they said all over the world there is only one man of god that will authorize they should fly him from wherever in the world and bring him to this family He's the one who will sit with us and talk to us and create a sharing formula over these assets. And we're talking of islands. We're not talking of land and kilometers. And so suddenly I'm sitting, minding my business, worshiping the Lord. But your mindset growing at a frequency where it can attract possibilities to your mind. Listen to this. Suddenly I have this call okay and they reached out to a dear friend of mine and said please so 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 family has instructed us as envoys to make sure that we talk to apostle joshua selman and the man said ah this man is busy he said you don't know the family i'm talking about that's why so 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 person is busy but please bring him ah when is he going to get a visa you know to put if if, if he doesn't have the visa for that nation they said what what is visa I mean, we are. I pray for you that you will believe what I'm sharing. So when my attention was called, I said, wow. 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 The immutability of God's counsel. Now I speak with one of them. Good afternoon, sir. Ah, I said I should be calling you sir no you have changed our lives and changed our families every one of us listened to your messages and they started sharing testimonies and said this is the problem and we have a team of lawyers and these guys are senior advocates we are not talking of people who are you can imagine really okay do you know what I will send somebody in that region to come and when he comes when I'm in that nation I will still come and meet you all of those people now worshiping that my friend's church do you know the meaning of that when you pastor certain quality people they represent rest for you these are people who create systems and structures I apologize if you think I'm sharing maybe to brag or to talk. I would not say this if I'm sharing it elsewhere. But I'm just showing you the possibility. The excuses you have been given are not the real excuses. It is something about your mindset. I'm not talking of a life of faking things and doing all those jargons that people do. That's not what I'm talking about. Investing in your mind. 
there is nothing that God told me that would happen in my life that he has not made his word true and so I believe everything he has said now for the future just like you are seated now and God has told you that one day you will stand before kings and your mindset is saying you better reject that statement and don't be a fool you think kings don't know who to go to please value yourself enough don't allow the background and the depravity in Africa to make you believe you are a non-entity everybody is made of the same material fair or black they are all made of earth it takes your mindset to lift and elevate you in life are you ready to pray we can stop here today and we'll continue tomorrow the remaining keys that i'll share with you will change your life now you walk with these three that i have given you number one is the power of vision number two the power of light knowledge and understanding and number three the power of superior sustaining superior belief systems yes lord yes lord you are the king there is none other yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord yes lord you are the king there is none other yes lord yes lord yes lord hallelujah 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 you are god hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, you are God. This song came to me the day I caught one of the mysteries that I'll be sharing with you. I sang this song for hours rejoicing. Lord, I acknowledge you as king over my life only the king of heaven will show me these things you have brought me rest today my parents live peaceful lives you see my parents you would not know they're as old as they really are there is no quarrel in my family whatsoever all the quarrel that can come you know what i'm talking about it, it has been solved in peace i spoke to my dad this afternoon today i said any problem anything he said god has given us rest we are grateful west is just to be praying for you that was my desire it was a goal when i could not afford bread and blue band my mind was growing i told my mother i said if you failed in life your assignment is that you gave birth to me and for the fact that you gave birth to me you will spend your life giving God praise. I bought vehicles for all my family members and people were talking and saying, ah, wow, you know how people talk. And then my mom said, you see, this is the trouble we told you we don't want. People are saying, why are you buying this? I said, are you joking? You are my parents. You've not seen anything else. So, except you pray for me to stop growing. I will make the nation celebrate you. Kings will stand at attention and said, what kind of a man, what kind of a woman are you? Someone was doing a promotion interview, true story. And he forgot to off his phone. And while they were talking, it was clear he was going to lose. Very serious promotion interview. I tell the truth and I lie not. And his phone rang. And it was one of my, I think, you know, these things people capture. One of these, my, whether prayer or something like that. And somebody who had it said, ah, that's apostle. He said, yes, sir. That was the end of it. Completely. I mean it in the name of Jesus. I read years ago, Miles Munro said, your name can become a key. That God has given him an excellent name. And I said, oh God, let it be tomorrow that my name will become a key that opens destinies and families. And I thank God that he has made it today. That's why I sang that song. We're rounding up. Rise up.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lift your voice in one minute and declare, I am changing. I know it. You, you can know that your life will never be the same. Pray in one minute. Our time is fast spent, but you pray. Pray. By light, I am rising in the spirit. Shala branda gete parato shala krata sebede kata shali sabanda brakato sabanda katoli apara. In the name of Jesus, I am rising. I am rising from glory to glory by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Shilas kabara tose iam para kato shale pratas yata. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You are God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We are going to pray just two prayer points. Please, dear people, God brought you here because He wants you to prosper don't argue with results and don't change the formula now build according to pattern and there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to bring you down are we together yes years ago my worship team wonderful and amazing people they wanted to go and be having ministrations and all of that day you know the each of we look we want to rise and i said sit down guys with this thing you have you will remain mediocre and the world will not celebrate you you will think i'm wicked but i'm your father and i love you i want the nations to celebrate you not your community sit down and sometimes it will pain them that there's an opportunity to shine i said shine among what sit down today right now these gentlemen are flying all over this nation people are inviting them in meetings they sing their songs in churches all around and one of them called me recently when he got an honorarium that he had never gotten in his life he said that is thank you sir i said i told you you work on your mindset rise leave all this ten ten naira five naira mediocre stay with god stay with destiny it is only one song that will you don't need many just one by the spirit by the spirit i'm working on a project for them with some of the top music artists in this nation i told them by the grace of god we have the influence and the relationship to call anybody into your life to lift you overnight now that you are ready please run away from premature manifestation first prayer point lord the grace to stay until i am made by your word made by your spirit is that prayer understood lift your voice and pray grace to stay pray the grace to stay You will lay up gold as dust. I tell you this. I 
Hallelujah. Next prayer point. Father, the materials and the resources I need that will give me knowledge and light for the next level of my life. I cry by the Spirit, bring them to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The resources, buy the truth, sell it not. The resources that I need that will shape my understanding. hallelujah praise the lord i read in my bible it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day that i will set you on high above the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 when i read it i believed it i said god if this is what you have said i believe I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ you are in this apostolic and prophetic conference beginning from tonight I declare a prophetic word over you may your life change like day and night may your life change like day and night I declare the vision that you need for your life and your destiny in the name of Jesus tonight may God reveal the blueprint of your destiny for you Amen. number two the knowledge that you will need to excel the requisite level of spiritual intellectual sociological information that you need to reign in life I speak to you may God bring those materials to you and number three i pray for you that beginning from tonight in the name of jesus christ i pray by the power of the holy spirit may your mind become supernaturally enlightened in jesus name we spoke on a few things according to first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 the conference was designed to move us forward the Bible says, please give us KJV. Let's leave it at KJV. Thank you, my dear. God bless you. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. And I did tell us yesterday that nobody moves just on their own. That physically when you find men moving and making exploits doing exploits in this kingdom that there is an invisible hand that moves men the bible says it is the lord that advanced moses exodus chapter 14 and verse 15 the nation of israel was standing before the red sea they thought this would be the end of them and they began to cry cry unto moses and moses also started crying unto god and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. That they go forward. That they go forward. Let them know that I am a God that advances people. Hallelujah. That they go forward. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3 I think it is ye have encompassed this mountain long enough turn you not words you have stayed at this level in your spiritual life you have stayed at this level in your finances you have stayed at this level in ministry it says turn northwards go northwards it's time 
to rise you are on a mountain you are at a level of results and a level of influence but god is saying rise to a new height hallelujah praise the name of the lord and we began to share a few principles i spoke about the power of vision as the first key that represents the force of advancement the power of vision and then number two the power of light spiritual illumination galatians chapter 2 and verse 2 paul said i went up by revelation it took revelation for me to go up i didn't go up just by desire i went up by revelation we go up in this kingdom by revelation the light the body of spiritual information that you have access to ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 the bible says the labor of the fool weary yet every one of them ecclesiastes 10 15 because they do not know how to go to the city there is a location but you need to know how to get to the city this evening a dear woman who serves me so powerfully wanted to go and greet my parents and they happened to be in jaws and they wanted to greet my parents and she was looking for the address they were close to where the family house was but because they didn't know they kept going from street to street and when they called i said where are you i said no no you missed the street it took someone to describe it and finally they found it the bible said the labor of the fool weary at every one of them because he does not know how to go to the city and then number three we spoke about the power of superior belief systems the power of a transformed mind you were brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine from you are brooding in over all my darkness you are causing the assignment of the god of this world is to blind the minds of people so that they do not sustain the belief systems that are responsible for the results that the bible desires for us to get you must transit in your understanding and maintain a superior belief system will you allow me to touch on at least one or two and then we'll pray uh, the our time is really gone and i want us to have the time for the miracle service but i just thought to at least touch one the fourth key that is responsible for advancement is the power of productivity the power of productivity mark chapter 1 from verse 36 and 37 mark chapter 1 Saparuski and simon and they that were with him followed after him and simon and they that were with him followed after him and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for you there are you've heard me say there are things that when you have only your tribesmen will seek for you there are things when you have only a particular age range will seek for you there are things when you have only the poor will look for you there are things when you have only the rich will look for you but there are things when you possess in this kingdom all men all men will seek for you the power of productivity the power of value this is very powerful exodus chapter 4 the scripture is just coming to my spirit this is not part of what i exodus chapter 4 we'll read from verse 2 then we'll read verse 7 this was moses having an encounter with the god of the hebrews and the lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he told god it was a rod 
moses is lifting up a powerless rod before the god of heaven and he said this is all that i have when i ran away from egypt i did not have the opportunity to take from the treasury of egypt and i'm standing and all that supports me is a rod go to verse 7 and he said put thy hand into your bosom and he put his hand and he plucked it out and behold it turned into you know this and that verse 8 when you read from verse 3 to verse i think one of the verses 6 7 8 one of them talks about him throwing the rod on the floor and picking it up and the bible says that this is the rod wherewith it called it the rod of god wherewith you will do signs and wonders it started as his rod but when he handed over that rod to god something came upon that rod and it was no longer called the rod of moses it became the rod of god and that seeming powerless rod was he became his instrument of signs and wonders when he got to the jordan we got to the red sea he stretched forth that same rod and it parted the sea tither and hither you may have something that looks insignificant grace for singing a public speaker you are a man of god called into ministry you are a businessman the secret let me tell you this listen carefully everything that you hand over to god and everything you pay the price to refine will become a weapon that god will use to bless and lift you listen carefully everything you hand over to god including your life and everything you pay the price to develop will always bring you to the place of greatness and to the place of glory you want to advance people will not seek you for nothing people will not reward you for nothing the world lives on a reward system nobody will place a demand upon you if you are not valuable and the world that we live in today mediocrity does not pay you must be exceptional it is the minimum standard for commanding the attention of all and sundry you must be exceptional exceptional in everything you do you are a preacher you are exceptional you are a businessman you understand your art you are a, a worshiper a singer you are exceptional you are a career person you are exceptional because you see by default our world is already full of sentiments you are Igbo, they say you are yoruba they say you are from the north they say you are an african they say so you you already have sentiments by default you are a lady you are a man you are young you are too old you are black you are white and all those kinds of sentiments it will take a dimension of competence that will cause men to leave all of those biases and place a demand on the grace of God upon your life provided there are options to you and what you provide you will continue being a beggar you will live at the lower levels of life you must rise to a point where with all humility you can know that there are not many of this kind are we together all men seek for thee it takes competence it takes preparation it takes diligence listen to my message diligence it's a very powerful message i made up my mind and i continue to challenge myself as a man of god and as a leader that by the grace of god almighty i will rise to the highest potential possible in christ and i'm not just going to fold my hands and say the holy spirit is living in me the anointing of the holy spirit is upon me no you walk your way through diligence it was bishop oyedeko that says everything works for those who walk it behind everything that works is someone walking it out we have this superstitious belief in africa that just because the power of the holy ghost is there and the grace of god is there we forgive ourselves and we tolerate mediocrity and we compare ourselves with very low standards and so we remain small you must challenge yourself think from a global perspective you are in business you can start from the city where you are but let your mind look at the globe do not allow anybody bully you with any standard all human beings are made of the same materials what makes us exceptional is the quality of our understanding 
are we blessed productivity is very powerful you must be diligent you must be diligent second first kings chapter 7 we'll read two verses first kings 7 and then we'll read 13 and 14 the bible says and king solomon read this with me it says and king solomon sent and fetched hiram out of tyre and then the bible now gives us a little brief about hiram it says he was a widow's son that means that guy was disadvantaged of the tribe of naphtali and his father was a man of tyre a worker in brass and he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to walk all works in brass and as a result of that competence he came to king solomon and wrote all his works even though his background was that he was a widow's son he was so competent solomon said i've been hearing about this man called hiram go and look for him and bring him listen you only re receive the reward of kings when you serve kings in business when your customers uh, permit me to use the word regular people they will only bless you according to what they have never rest until you serve the kings of your industry if you work in a restaurant can presidents come and eat your food until nobles can come you see look at me there are three levels of living i'm not teaching on finances and all of that but financially speaking in fact there are four levels of living two of them are demonic the first and the last the first level of living is called survival it's a dangerous state that is the state where you can kill or you can do any kind of thing survival the second level of living is called comfort you are comfortable your basic needs are met the third level of living is called luxury you have options the last level of living is called extravagance both survival and extravagance will destroy you but you must trust god to rise to a higher level of life a life with dignity and a life with honor are we together make up your mind that you are going to be exceptional I met this gentleman who does portrait and i have so many pictures in my house you know people try to some paint some do all kinds of things and um some of them look like me some of them i wonder who who they were trying to paint i'm surprised i'm saying who are you gentleman what what are you doing in my house you know but then every time do you know that excellence is a language like Igbo if I speak Igbo now those who are Igbo people or I speak any other language within your region those who are of that tribe can hear is that true excellence is a language and there are people who understand that language yes when you serve kings you will receive the reward of kings after we were done with the brief session we had this morning i was on my way back to the hotel and i just passed the street leading there and i saw a beautiful walk beautiful artwork this gentleman just selling it by the street it was so beautiful it caught my attention i said wow this is this is it was the portrait of a lion i i i, I like a lot of artworks and then i i mean this was exceptionally beautiful and when i saw it i said now this is excellent i told my protocol i said make sure you go and get that thing before someone else goes to get it and right now as i speak to you it's in my room i'm going with it that guy when he was praying this morning and say father favor me his prayer was in my pocket but his excellence that even though he did not know me he still took my money today some of these superstitious prayers we keep praying and say god bless me and you know what you are offering will be wickedness if sat are we together now that's right wickedness because there are people if i eat your food for instance 
and then you don't even understand what is going on there and you are sad you are angry and yet you are praying and say father let kings kings don't come to your light they come to the brightness of your rising it is gentiles that come to your light kings also have results so they don't come to results they come to consistent ever increasing results when everybody was coming to solomon there was a woman of utopia called the queen of sheba she had her own pride and had her own results she did not come it was when she heard about the dexterity of his palace then one day in majesty history tells us it took her about six months it was supposed to take a three years journey but it took her six months or they're about to come to the palace of of uh, solomon and she was six months in that palace and at the end of everything when she saw the order the bible says she was she had no breath in her she said half of this was not told me can i tell you how god lifts people many times god will make your name greater than you really are so that while they are celebrating that name you should walk quickly to rise to match your name if you do not take advantage of that honor so god will magnify who you really are more than you really are so that while people are celebrating you you can grow quickly to the level where you truly match your name it becomes a disappointment when your name is greater than you i will make your name great it doesn't mean you are great god magnifies you in the presence of people and he says son i've done my part now they are honoring you at the level that truly you don't deserve walk quickly to rise to that level so that the day they meet you they said ah this is not a hype truly this is deserving there are people i've heard about i met with my life and i was so disappointed i said what sort of nonsense is this and there are people i've met and when i met i said no they didn't do them justice to announce the level of excellence hallelujah are we blessed value and productivity let's talk about value value is divided into two i'll just touch that quickly and then we pray the first dimension of value you should develop is called your virtue your character more than your skill the first dimension of value you must develop is called your character now many people have done justice in terms of their skill their transactable skill they are intelligent they can do this but their character is almost zero and you will be surprised that you will use bad behavior and a very very poor um what do i call it disposition to shut many good doors in your life great people are not necessarily looking for skilled people they are looking for people who have character a wealthy man can employ graduates and give them fifty thousand hundred thousand but that man will give someone who never went to school but will never steal his money he will say you hold my atm you know all my pain he can call him and say use internet banking transfer 10 million and yet that other gentleman he does not trust you he knows you are educated listen let me tell you this you must become a man and a woman of solid character integrity diligence honor and respect become a person of character and you will be amazed there are not many people who have character there are three tests three things that will test your character in life number one pride pride will come to test your character it's called the pride of life number two lost lost is not just an affinity for women or men is an ungodly affinity for things includes men includes women immorality and all of that but the whole idea of lost is an ungodly affinity i want this covetousness is a subset of lost i i desire this so much it does not matter whether i will kill to get it i will still get it are we together yes if you don't conquer that test you will never become sustainably great mm. you have to know the things that are do or die issues in your life and there are only three of them 
only three things according to scripture are worth your life and death number one your relationship with god number two your family number three your assignment every other thing is not worth your life you have to know what is what's taking your life to are we together character trust god for grace to become a man and a woman of character be careful with some of these things you learn around social media i'm not against social media don't get me wrong but we must be careful because the social media space is like the realm of the spirit you can fetch anything there what will kill you and what will bless you there are people who were well behaved till they started following certain platforms or what do you call them channels and they began to learn nonsense that will destroy their life there are people who were respectful very diligent people until they started following people who began to mentor them that for you to be accepted they call masculinity synonymous with rebellion once you are soft and respectful they say well life is not for you you should be strong-headed like satan that means you follow the destiny of the one you follow too. you say you are you're, you are like your father the devil the virtues that once made people outstanding in society are now looked at as weak virtues when a lady is virtuous respectful godly society looks at her as some cheap village girl who is not exposed but when you are hard you speak to everybody that's how i am oh, my head is touching i'm a christian but when's my head touch you know all those wise sayings that we bring society claps for you and say that's right you are now a matured human being let me tell you this watch the lives of people that you follow don't just follow blindly where are they going have you climbed a bike taking you somewhere and the man was boasting that he knew the location and you got to the visit i said ah, it's been almost two years so i don't know if he's left or right i said sir i thought you said i'm in a hurry i said okay let's try this and you just find out that it connects to the road you are just coming from and you say okay park and the man says truly let me be honest with you even me i don't know where we are going that's how many people are it's funny but it's true we live in an arrogant generation that even at the zenith of our confusion we still act like we know what we are doing and when we draw thousands of people then we turn back and say do you know what this 15 years followership you have been doing i don't know where i'm going me too i'm this i'm discovering myself i forbid it for your destiny in the name of jesus don't see elderly people and insult them and shake them as if as if no what i'm teaching you will make you look cheap until you see the excellency of character especially for those of us that god begins to bless you buy a little jeep one 10 million 20 million here and that's the, the end of it and god says so this all your good behavior was just for this amount whereas this is where i want to take you and he says no leave him here this is the best stage to still get his sense together because if he moves beyond this realm we do not even know what he can become humility humility you don't like what i'm teaching please like it oh this is the key that makes you exceptional for sustaining this alone someone looks at you and when you get to there you see there are times you get to certain levels in life where everybody has what you have in terms of skill it will take character to give you an edge if it's phd everybody has the phd if it's a certification in the uk or in um, america or wherever everybody has it too if it's the region they are looking for someone from everybody's from that region what then becomes your defining advantage character imagine that joseph stood before the king and said king you locked me in prison i'm an innocent person a woman lied that i raped her you didn't have the sense to verify and you locked me for how long the king will say thank you please take him back i promise you joseph will die in that prison don't say i was born like that no you change men can change please give me this bottle of water gentlemen this bottle of water thank you very much watch this this is called what a bottle of water 
why is it called a bottle of water because the content in it is water is that true if i change it to a bottle to orange juice what will it be called a bottle of orange juice your mindset is like this bottle it is what is inside that defines you you can change it there's no such thing as i was born like that no conquer the limitations of your region and become a person of character every region has its flaws and its weaknesses it is your assignment to walk in partnership with the word and the spirit and transit yourself you know you are transformed when people can hardly trace you to an earthly region they shouldn't look at you and say oh he's behaving like a yoruba man that's how they are he's behaving like an Igbo man aha uh -huh. where are you from Igbo Abi? he's behaving like a house man this is always how they are they are they are as foolish like that you must get to a point where people are you really from because the the dexterity of your growth you don't look like anything around your region because you now come from another system and another culture are we blessed yes thank you let me teach you many of you have listened to my messages there are four would I say phrases or whatever it is now that I always teach that help people they have worked wonders in my life let me teach you number one please write it down please P L E A S E that word please you will be amazed at how many doors can be opened just because you can say please everybody say please it's a miracle service don't worry we're going to pray one more time say please. please someone calls you who is about to change your life and you are busy call me call me back as if um you are talking to your your friend or you are talking to your mate no use the word please please is you are giving a message of cautiousness and courtesy remember okay it wasn't this session it was in the morning i taught them that the highest psychological need of any man is the need to be loved to be valued and to be appreciated people will fight you and hate you when you demean them are we together now yes one more time say please this is a deliverance service the miracle service has started already because some of us you will be surprised you went for an interview and you they asked you a question you couldn't say please and they were just listening to you you thought they were impressed they just said, okay leave you will hear from us this is 2016 till now 2020 is about to finish please please can you help me with this not help me with this please see i can't even fake the thing because i've trained myself one more time say please you will be surprised that you are trusting god to enter a godly relationship and every lady is telling you no it doesn't necessarily mean it's not the will of god for you to move forward it's just that your bad behavior does not even you that sense of courtesy same thing with a lady shift can you shift let me sit down this chair for only you you too you met a chair here and maybe god is already speaking to the guy and he says god no way no no i've, I've given too much to you for this kind of thing blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with the second that i want to teach you is called i am sorry write it down not sorry i am sorry don't say sorry who is sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry is a revelation that we are all humans and there's nothing to be embarrassed by it are we together yes i'm sorry has caused respectfully speaking lack of i'm sorry has brought divorce has brought people losing millions in business i'm sorry that's it there are many men all they need okay i'm sorry i'm sorry my wife i'm sorry i didn't see it from this perspective especially men they would rather go round and round have you eaten today what of genius has he eaten too uh we thank god for what just say i'm sorry it's as simple as that it doesn't kill doesn't sting it's as honest as that 
I'm sorry. Try it. Say, I'm sorry. Tell your neighbor, I'm sorry. You'll be surprised he has been waiting for it. Say, I'm sorry. Don't just say, I'm sorry to God. I'm sorry to everyone. I'm sorry. I didn't see it that way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry just means I admit that I'm human. And that's what people want to hear. It's as simple as that. Number three, very quickly. We're teaching value. Thank you. Write it and say, thank you. Do you know ingratitude, Pastor Ike, has made people to vow never to help some people again, plus their children's children. Have you seen people like that? Have you had people in your life that you helped or your parents helped and they did not have the courtesy to say thank you? You give them rice every Christmas. The only time they call is December 17th, 18th. They just send a text. You see a lot of missed calls. You know that is because the season is coming. No. Thank you. Learn gratitude is powerful. In this kingdom, gratitude is the seed for more. You are not qualified to have more till you are grateful for the one you have. First to God and then to men. Thank you. And if God grants you grace, make your gratitude specific. Thank you. Pastor, I thank you. The other day you gave me a lift. I am truly grateful. I appreciate this. Every time you thank people, you make them owe you again. They will do it again and again. And that includes God. Are we together? Yes. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not his benefits. Gratitude. It's a very big secret in my life. When you see me thanking God, you almost wonder and say, come, what did God do to you like this? Every little thing. When I started working in the miraculous, I didn't have to wait until there was a spectacular miracle. You don't thank God for headache, you will never raise anybody from wheelchair. You don't thank God for wheelchairs, you will never speak and change the lives of people. Someone gives a testimony, I have never received favor, but I got 200 Naira recharge card, you celebrate it. God, you are still the doer. We honor you. No man can do this. I woke up this morning. Father, thank you. I give you praise. Many people slept and they did not wake up. You have given me the gift of life. And God says, you mean you are talking so much about that? I learned this from my parents. I didn't understand when we were growing up. When it was time for end of year family prayers. It's almost as if you will cry. Because two hours can be spent thanking God. My mother forgets that she's talking with people there. And she starts talking and says, God, the other day, when I was on my way to the market, was it not you that helped me? I knew what I saw. She's praying, no? That boss would have crushed everybody. Men will not understand. And sometimes she just feels guilty and she says, I know they think I'm just talking, but me and you, you know. And we are there just listening, waiting for when they'll say in Jesus' name. But do you know what? It's a secret that I've learned today. Ah, God, thank you. Thank you for tea. Thank you for bread. Not where is the blue band. It is in the thanksgiving that the blue band will be on his way coming. Lord, I thank you. God, you are watching me. You've not given me admission. And God says, no. Thank God that I even have a work result. Lord, I give you thanks. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Try to do this. Go and lock the door of your shop and thank God and dance like a fool. Lord, I thank you. I didn't have the money to order the goods this year, but I give you praise. They just said that I lost 50 million naira. And ordinarily, I would have collapsed. The fact that I'm standing, I give you praise. And I know that there is hope for the living. Lord, I'm celebrating you. It does not make sense. I may not have made profit in money terms this year, but I made profit in wisdom. I thank you. I still did not lose. While you are thanking, heaven is watching and saying somebody is ready to enter another level. You never find me stand before God and complain. No. Lord, I thank you. Thank you i thank you thank you for everything you have done thank you for the anointing thank you for your grace thank you for favor 
it's one thing to be anointed but it's another thing entirely for men to love you you can be as anointed as you can be jesus yourself he went so, to certain places and they cost him they say go out of this place so when men receive you you go back and say thank you that they can receive of the grace of god upon my life someone say thank you jesus turn it into a prayer in one minute just thank him for something you're not wasting your time these are the forces of advancement oh yes i thank you thank you thank you thank you please pray asaba thank the king of glory for his faithfulness you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well jesus you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well jesus you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well jesus you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well jesus one more time keep praying you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well jesus you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well listen to my message the mystery of gratitude it will change your life forever i show you a big secret in my life gratitude lord i'm grateful lord i'm grateful when i'm done from mighty services and god has done great things and people are sending all these text messages apostle you are this and that i go back and sometimes i just kneel down at the side of my bed and say your majesty your boy has come again to say thank you for your faithfulness and god says in spite of the fact that they were clapping for you and i say god i'm not confused i know where you took me from and he says let's go to the next level practice gratitude to men let me give you an assignment find the top five people that god used to help you this year and do something for them just do what i'm asking you to do you may not have money to do physical things but you can send a text don't just send a text and say thanks you are not wise if you send that kind of text after what i'm teaching you thanks is carelessness it's better to not even send anything dearest uncle this is me coming at the end of the year to say thank you after a thoughtful contemplation i cannot but thank you for your kindness thank you for sponsoring me in school finally i'm a graduate this is a graduate with a grateful heart god bless you he won't reply but you have secured your tomorrow let me tell you these are secrets that i'm teaching you the foolishness that many believers do and they don't know why a door that was open yesterday closes to this is a miracle service already I, I want you to return with results sometimes the ministries that have invited me for ministration i take out time personally the ones i've built a relationship with and i say thank you thank you very much for your kindness they thought it was a privilege that i came but i tell them thank you thank you for helping me serve jesus this year thank you i thank my leaders all the time i celebrate them and i say thank you guys thank you for your love for your support go back and do it to your mother do it to your father do it to your relatives someone should not be investing money time and everything and you say it's my right did i ask you to give that to me that bad behavior 
is what the devil uses to padlock many doors do it to your manager in the company buy wine one thousand naira instead of buying things to psycho fans who will not bless you whoever loves you enough to commit whether they are leverage of their integrity don't trivialize it don't just thank god alone thank men this is a deliverance for someone already i'm giving you this assignment you don't need many people write the list of five people that this year you sat down and you were saying where will i get money from suddenly an alert came fifty thousand. god bless you don't ignore it go back and let them know that you appreciate it you have a wife that cooked for you from january to december let me tell you i'm tired of counts out there let's leave that let's not even go there you just thank god for a wife that has both the skill and the sense to cook thank god for a husband that can provide they've never driven you out from rent don't say it's my husband no my husband thank you i appreciate you thank you for making me a proud wife i love you from the depth of my heart laugh and say why do you need to do this you'll go back and say god i knew i got it right thank you holy ghost for your direction you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well jesus you have done me well you have done me well. you have done me well one day try a vigil of just thanksgiving not to write a list and say god be looking you are you are there you are the one who created these kinds of things listen to me reorient your understanding i'm showing you why certain people have become friends of god they are grateful 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 i look at my life today and i say lord if you never bless me i still owe you my life you've done too much it's not a special number it's a hard communication of truth we're discussing character oh, i don't know how we got here you can earn a living being grateful you meet your master that you are working for thank you so much sir i know that i came from a family you are you were just supposed to train me but you give me hundred hundred thousand every time i don't take it for granted I want you to know that I appreciate you. Maybe your father offended the man and he's doing what he's doing for you just for the sake of God. Now you have made him love you not just because of your father or your family. You have developed a personal relationship because of gratitude. Please do this assignment I'm giving you. Write a text. When you are looking for a wife, you know what you wrote. When you are looking for a husband, you know what you wrote. When you are looking for a job, you know what you wrote. Settle down and compose a heart-touching, mature text to people who mean a lot to your destiny, even if they are your loved ones. Thank them for what they have done, and you will be surprised to see what will happen. Suddenly, he calls you. Uncle, I'm, I'm reminding you that morning now. Is it, must you wait till the year ends, ne? I thought you promised. And the man says you are you are stupid for this thing you have done you see insults you and says go away and discusses with his wife and says honey if you see anybody from this family come to this house don't open the gate for them you just shut the gate not just for you but for your children unborn because of ingratitude but you can do the same thing and the moment you are grateful god will just move the man's wife to say i've always known that this man regardless of what the father or the mother did this is a very good person let's be fair to this family let's not punish innocent children because of the mistakes of the family suddenly they call you and say send us the list of your school fees we will sponsor you till you are done with the university many great doors is a little key that opens them hallelujah let's go to the business of the night i have to stop here to be continued one day when the lord will grant us grace in the name of jesus thank you psalm 63 psalm 63 god bless you ah this gratitude thing touched me even on stage here now i feel like just driving you people away and just 
sit down here alone and just begin to recount and tell god thank you go home and try it learn gratitude learn gratitude learn gratitude it will open doors for you psalm 63 oh god thou art my god early will i seek thee my soul thirsted for you my flesh longed for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is what do i long for to see your power this is one of the keys for advancement and thy glory so i ha as i have seen in the sanctuary look at me it takes power to advance in life it takes power to move forward in life more than your skill more than relationships it will take the supernatural power of the holy ghost to move a man from one dimension to the other and the psalmist said i long to see your power in my life i long to see your power in my life the outworkings of your spirit i long to see your anointing the graces that you have put that help men to command unusual results i desire this grace in my life i long to see your power now listen when you come to meet me and say you want to buy water what do i give you money money is what is converted to that water isn't it when i give you money i've given you the power of purchase and the power of conversion now listen when you come to god anything you ask god for what he gives you is not that thing he gives you power it is that power you will return with to the earth realm and exchange it for what you want lord i want protection over my family there is a requisite dimension of spiritual power that guarantees that protection so he supplies that power you bring that power to the earth realm and engage it through understanding and a spiritual fortification is built around your family are you understanding this now yes first peter chapter 2 let's start from verse 1 is it first peter first peter or second peter chapter one his divine power what's the scripture hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness grace and peace be multiplied unto you that's the scripture i'm looking for is first peter right you people are not bible students second peter one let's start from verse two thank you grace and peace he says be multiplied unto you look up please grace and peace can be multiplied unto you and he says through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord verse 3 according as what his divine power hath given unto us how many things how many things so it is his divine power that gives all things favor is part of all things protection is part of all things healings and miracles all things advancement all things that whatever you need in this realm it is his divine power your faith is simply a connection point to his divine power lord i need prosperity it is his divine power that translates as the power to make wealth lord i need to subdue the enemies that attempt to walk against the counsel of god in my life and he releases his power say unto god how terrible are thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power thy enemies shall submit themselves to you it takes power to stand tall in this wicked world it takes power to make progress it takes power to start and finish anything we have a slang in nigeria and in africa when you see someone doing very capital projects you say wow strong man this man you are strong what you mean is you have financial strength or you have connection power the ability of the spirit at work in a believer you want to do ministry with signs and wonders you need the power of the holy ghost 
there is a requisite dimension of unction and grace upon your life believe in the power of the holy ghost believe in his divine power that is the agency that is responsible for manifesting possibilities in your life without the power of god your christian experience will be barren you will never truly make progress without power it takes power to build a great business it takes power to build a great ministry you do not know the forces that attempt to sit on the destinies of people they sat on the destinies of your parents your grandparents now here you come and you tell them mm -mm, i'm not going to allow you sit upon my destiny it takes power to dislodge principalities and powers the power of the holy ghost I came from a region where you never rise from that region and become global no the only people who have become global from that region in fact if any may just be maybe military people because I come from a lineage of warriors and so it's it, that's just the area but as far as exploits is concerned and I made up my mind that I will rewrite the rules again it was it looked like I was stupid when I was doing it ah shift from the way of a man who god has held his hand with his right hand of power because you will be wasting your time trying to stop that man the power of the holy ghost how shall these things be mary said seeing that i know not a man the angel didn't say god is alive he says the power of the highest how shall these things be that in three months i will be in my own house in asaba the power of the highest how shall it be that from today i will contact a grace for signs and wonders how shall it be that rise from this city that the entire globe will hear voice every time it looks impossible it means only the power of god can do something about it i've seen god do impossible things in my life Do you believe what i'm teaching you power we're about to pray but it's very important he is here working miracles i worship you i worship you you are here turning lives around I worship you I worship you who knew that a song that a woman would sing somewhere in Nigeria but when the power of the Holy Ghost came upon it it moved with grace years ago the Lord told me that I will put angels that will lift your messages I will give it wings and it will go to the ends of the earth and when God said it, I believed him. And today this teaching is in the palace of kings. It's in the place of nobles, shifting and changing nations. There are churches outside this country that play my messages for midweek service. That's all they do. Audio. Even before the video started coming online. Audio. With the sound quality that is not at its best, they will enjoy it and sit down as an enlightened congregation. Do not downplay the power of the Holy Ghost and what it can do. When God tells you, I want to do this in your life, the power of God is the, the force that ensures compliance. We make miracle walk, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God. I call you now, we make Miracle work from this keeper. Waymaker by his power, he can shift things. There are people God has told me I will make you meet them. And I said, Ah, God, how will I meet these people? And I just remembered, God, forgive me. I've worked with you too much to ask that kind of foolish question. The power of the Holy Ghost. One of the men God said I would meet. Very great man. These are the people that enthrone kings in this nation. 
they are king makers the man became sick recently and someone advised him and said send for apostle joshua selman and he called immediately he said come to his house there were piles of governors waiting in his office and said come come and i said god you said it if i didn't have the power of the holy ghost what will bring me to the palace of kings we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness whilst you are seated in one minute i like you to pray and say father the dimension of power that must come upon my life i'm tired of ordinary living i'm tired of ordinary business i'm tired of ordinary motherhood i'm tired of ordinary ministry i'm tired of ordinary academics please pray i'm tired of ordinary living You're not a man, oh. You're not a man, oh. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. That's the God we serve. He's not a man, no. Oh. He's not a man, oh. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. Hey, no one like you. Hey, say, no one like you. No one like you, Father. No one like you, Master. You're the God of everything. No one like you. No one like you, Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, is no one like you. Shalapakarato Sadabakatalikata. Ah! No one like you, my son. You're the God of everything, no one like you. You're the God of everything, no one like you. Hear me? It takes power to have a fulfilling ministry. Hear me? People must return back with real results for them to acknowledge the grace of God upon your life. When a generation where people are tired of stories, when you tell this person, go back and return with a testimony and he does return, he will not come alone in the bible when P immediately jesus announced his messiahship the first proof of it is hey madam stretch your withered hand as a proof that i am messiah listen you need power to move forward in life and in ministry we're planning expansion of our ministry and going to the u.s and to uk and a group of these people just came and before i would say jack robinson they went to open an office for me in the u.s i said be patient they said no way we can't wait now let me tell you i know they love me but it's not just because they love me they know that your entrance into any system is the act of god coming can i tell you this you must pray and cry for real power to come upon your life the power that causes changes that the day you say let's pray and you pray with that person by evening a door has opened it will be impossible to ignore you impossible to ignore you impossible to ignore you when people are blessed and changed they will come and support whatever you stand for you have a building project they will come and say please let us be part of this why because we have discerned the power of god in your life the psalmist said to see your power and your glory we are really going to pray for spiritual power for many of us when we talk of spiritual power all that comes to your mind is falling down and standing up power is more than that oh is the force that ensures compliance 
the assignment of power is to make the word of god come to pass by force if god says you are blessed there is a requisite power that must stand to ensure that anything that is not the blessing coming to your life it will scatter it into pieces every time god speaks to you that word is at the mercy of his power to come to pass so when god says nations will come and breast you that you will suck the breast of kings that is just a statement and it's almost jargons without power that's just a storyline but when the power of god comes it will leave you and go and draw those kings that the bible says you will suck from it is that power that will force them to locate you It's the power of god that stabilizes your stand in this life and ensures that time does not push out your relevance because without power you will fade away with time you see people rise and excel in a particular season this is not backsliding time just blows them away and they sit down their part of history is power that keeps you fresh and relevant how do you warm your food is it not fire you put under when you bring out your food that stayed overnight you put it in the fridge and it was closed how do you warm it you set fire upon it and when fire begins to burn something happens I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost without the power of the Holy Ghost everything I say to you will not come to pass I assure you even if it is scripture I'm quoting be blessed may the hand of the Lord bless you I lay hands on you without the power of the Holy Ghost you can sow a seed carry your seed and drop you just donated money you would have gone to eat with it in a restaurant you just dropped it because the force that gives it life is not there someone pray again Lord I need power in my life this is a miracle service are you praying lord i need genuine power power for the impossible i need power i'm tired of stories i'm tired of explanations the bible says the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of god not the explanation believe me you need power for your marriage to work you need power for bills to be paid you need power for the influence of the spirit over your life to spread to every nook and cranny this is our last night together pray listen it takes the power of the holy spirit to roll the reproach in your life can i tell you this look at this reproach is like a mountain that stands before you you can push it by your own strength get out of my life so that i can have some dignity and honor and that reproach will refuse to leave but it takes an engracing from the spirit that you clear that thing out of your way reproach of 21 years reproach of 10 years get out of my life this bed waiting get out of my life this pile get out of my life it takes power taking the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace undeniable there's no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father my ever it's your language go ahead oh man my prophesy to yourself hey oh man my that's what god is doing he's rolling away reproach from your life lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice and sing yeah 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 I 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to start my prayer. We're going to be very brief. But, please, this is not for everybody. But you know there is an age-long captivity in your family where nobody rises. Come and stand out here quickly. Please, make sure you don't just come out carelessly. Please, make sure you understand what I'm saying. That you know there is a captivity. Nobody at all seems to rise in your family. Taking the pain and the sorrows away, you've given me peace undeniable. There's no need to cry, cause you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. You're my father, my everything. Listen to what you're singing. He's your father, your everything. Yeah. You're my father. I want to pray for you. Listen, listen to me. You are not the first to have captivity over your life. Before I came, the only successful person almost from my entire lineage was my father. Nobody could rise beyond under. It was when God broke me through that i dragged everybody and said you must all be successful so don't be ashamed that you are standing here many of our loved ones are sincere if they had the power to break this thing they would have broken it i'm going to pray a prayer for you right now you return back to your seat but i want you to believe in what i'm praying for you you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen to your destiny are we together father please help those under the anointing while i pray because i really want there are spirits that i must cast out right now there are demons that are sitting you don't have to kneel because of space please if you kneel there will be no space but i'm going to pray that prayer and the power of god is going to come on certain people there, there is the siege of darkness for some of you physically you look like you are okay but in the realm of the spirit there are chains tying you down we must end this right now father i declare by the spirit of god and by the power of the holy ghost lord there are people here who are under all kinds of yokes and captivity tying down their lives and their destinies in the name of jesus and at the count of three i declare by the power of the holy spirit that this yoke must be broken from your life the Bible says the yoke shall be taken off from your neck, the burden from your shoulder. It shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus. One, two, get ready. I'm seeing fire coming on people. Three, right now I break that yoke. I command that spirit, go out of them now. Be broken now. In the name of Jesus agree with me i cast that demon i cast that devil that spirit sitting upon your life in the name of jesus be delivered right now that age-long captivity that siege that your father could not break that your mother could not eat in the name of jesus that seeds that say you will never rise that men will never see your face i stand by the god of heaven i tear that veil from your life in the name of jesus christ hallelujah listen to me i'm still praying you'll go back to your seat shortly but every legal access that satan has over your life because the bible says even the lawful captives there are times that people are under captivity legitimately the ignorance of the fathers brought their families under siege but in the name of jesus i declare by the blood of the eternal covenant that for every one of you who is out here that the devil on legal basis is plaguing you whether with poverty whether with death whether with delay whether with retrogression whether with rising and falling down spirits that come to sleep with you in the night while you are sleeping shabari kata fire is falling right now 
help them fire is falling right now that this spirit you see yourself in secondary school writing exams that never finish in the name of jesus right now let the power of god come upon you i break that yoke i break that yoke I shake kapoto soto bariata. I break that yoke in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. There are many of you here. Just when there is a time for promotion, you go back to sleep, and someone comes to molest you, and you get up and every favor that should happen, a door of business is about to open to you. Suddenly, you are seeing yourself in primary school writing exams you are seeing yourself in an old house what are you doing there again the bible says it says uh, forgetting the things that are behind every spirit that keeps taking you to your yesterday in the name of jesus by the power of the holy ghost let it break now in the name of jesus let it be broken now let it be broken now let it be broken now i tell you there is massive deliverance going on here enough is enough you are a student you teach others you conduct tutorial for others but as soon as you enter the exam hall it looks like a spell is cast upon your mind you write rubbish till you come out later in the evening you are bathing you remember every answer in the name of jesus the cloud that is sitting on your mind that is causing you shame and reproach by the power that raised christ from the dead i declare be delivered now be delivered now one last prayer and then you go back to your seat look at me there are people the moment you hold money in your hand there is a spirit that is sent to you things start happening in your life and your family until that money finishes father has malaria just when he's recovering mother has typhoid just when it's your your car spoils just when it's happening so when the money finishes every problem goes back in the name of jesus the devourer that eats up the blessings of god upon your life i come tonight by the rod of a higher priesthood remember you are not standing for yourself alone think of your loved ones think of your children as you stand i cast her help her help her help that lady i cast that spirit in the name of jesus out of them now release their families please go back to your seat and concentrate let's continue the service quickly go back to your seat rejoicing go back to your seat quickly i'm still praying lift your voice everybody shout it after me say in the name of jesus please be serious be serious say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that every force causing disfavor in my life my family my children my loved ones my career my ministry you come on that judgment this night lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray declare ye thou that thou mightest be justified In the name of Jesus say in the name of Jesus my feet my hands my head I command go forward these are symbols of advancement in your life lift your voice and pray be serious pray your feet a symbol of your direction your hand a symbol of your productivity your head a symbol of your glory i command you go forward i command you move forward go forward go forward no more delay no up today down tomorrow go forward Ah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You help people achieve things, but that result never happens in your own life. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. You have escorted people to find blessings in their life. You escort people, you are discussing about job. They pick them and they leave you there. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That spirit that makes you a spectator and never a participant in divine things. I command right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. May that spirit live your life forever. May that spirit live your life forever. May that spirit live your life forever. The power of God is going to come on certain people right now. Just be patient with me. We will not take too much time. And these people that I see, they have been destined to be the ones to lift their family. But there are spirits that are tracing their lives. I see the Lord is ministering to me that those people, there is an unction on them to be the ones who will lift up their families. Help that man. That's one of them there. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now I stretch my hands by the spirit if you belong to that family you will never stand the power of god there are people here bring them out in the name of jesus you are destined to be the one that god will use to lift your family but there are spirits stopping that to happen right now by fire at the count of three the fire of the spirit is locating them it's time to release your destiny for the sake of your family one two Bring them out. Please, whether you are an usher or not, help them so they don't enjoy themselves. Bring them out. Three, may that fire locate you right now. May it locate you right now. Bring them out. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, bring them out, please. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. So Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh. I'm still praying again. God is setting people free. That anyone here, you are the one that the grace for the deliverance of your family is on. But the devil has blinded. These are not just all of them. The Holy Ghost is telling me there are still more people. There are spirits that are trying to stop people from receiving. Lord, from the front to the back, may the fire of the Holy Ghost locate those people right now. Bring them out. Locate them right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. We set you free from this. For the sake of your family. It's time for them to rise. It's time to rise to greater heights. Bring them by the Spirit of God. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just do the work of an usher. It's time to set you free. Bring them out. I want to pray for them. now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty every one of you out here is representing a family not just you you are representing a destiny and this spirit will not let you go but right now in the name of jesus the bible says how forcible are right words ah i'm still seeing fire burning 
I'm still seeing fire burning in this auditorium. I'm still seeing fire burning. There are custodians of destiny whose destinies have been under siege. Jesus Abakatosa Likata you must release them in the name of jesus christ i'm about to pray a prophetic prayer that will go to the foundation of every family and dig out everything that is not the christ now for all of you who are brought out here there is an unction on your life for your destiny but there are age-long spirits i'm about to make a pronouncement to the realm of the spirit i speak to these principalities and powers you know my voice i come by the rod of a higher priesthood at the count of three release these families and this destiny one two three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies release the virtues release the graces release the unction release the marriages release the liftings release the job release the open doors release the children that you have tied down in these families everyone lift your voice and begin to pray my life is released my destiny is released everyone you are praying please take this prayer session serious everyone you are praying i release myself from every chain the chains that have held me down held my family down it's time to be released oh. Oh 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 Hallelujah I'll pray for the sick shortly but the Lord is showing me a vision here wow this is serious The Lord is telling me that there are some of you you have you are gifted you are blessed but in the realm of the spirit there is a veil covering you head to toe this is what I'm seeing in the visions of the Lord everything God has given you can't seem to find visibility you are gifted but it look no one is seeing you I'm about to tear that veil now in the name of Jesus Christ father anyone under the sound of my voice who is gifted and blessed who should be located by your helpers and yet because of this i'm telling you i'm seeing garments like garments you know how they dress like hijab this is what i'm seeing in the spirit and there are people physically nobody can come through to, for you to help you right now at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus and as you sh shout the name fire will burn off that veil and release you to be seen and that what you carry will be appreciated right now in the name of jesus father that you will honor your word according to the vision you have showed me are you ready one two three shout jesus i command that fail be torn now i command that fail be torn now saparita tote seleketapa be torn now i give you visibility in the spirit visibility in business visibility in your academics visibility maritally visibility financially in the name of jesus the christ of god hallelujah praise the lord there is a little girl that was standing here where is she i think she was standing with her mother one of the little girls she was sitting here is that girl in this place bring that girl for me in your name we will rise adonai 
you reign on earth. Where is that? Where is that my wonderful daughter that, that was singing worship here? Where is she? Come. This girl you see, a time will come when the nations will be hearing her voice. This lady you are seeing. Where's the lady? I can't see her. Come, my dear. This is my adorable lady. This lady you see, I'm seeing what was on Esther, Queen Esther, on this lady. It's a grace for royalty. And I'm going to pray for her. And you came to join her. I'll pray for you both then. But I want you to stretch your hand in one minute. Pray as if you are praying for your own child. Father, take this our precious daughter to heights and realms. Keep her from the company of wicked and unreasonable people. Destiny destroyers. In the name of Jesus. What's your name, darling? Amanda. Very wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amanda, I prophesy. And I speak over your life. You will become like Esther. Yeah. I pray that you will meet your Mordecai. Yeah. May Mordecai introduce you to Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins. Yeah. And may Haggai show you the secrets of the palace. Yeah. And in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, that you will find a Hazarus who will cause you to walk in destiny. Yeah. We make this happen by the Spirit. And we declare that all who know you will celebrate you and your enthronement will become the deliverance of many and for you too darling i pray for you you have come out may the lord bless you in the similitude of the palace he will give you beauty and glory in the name of jesus christ god bless you thank you who is emeka i'm going to pray for the sick shortly but i'm hearing a name emeka emeka what do you do what do you do? What's your name? You are a Mecca. What's your name? What do you do? Good. A banker. This is the person I'm looking for. Let me pray for you. God is going to lift you. Eh? Where, where, which bank is that? Is it true? He's a banker here. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you in public. I speak elevation. Ah. Should I tell you what I'm seeing? How long have you been in the banking? Three years. Three years. Ah, I'm seeing a plane carrying you to Lagos. I don't know whether this is good or bad, though, but I'm seeing a plane carrying you to Lagos. And it's a higher dimension of promotion. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I shift this, your son. Step into a new dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have the same name with my head of protocol. Your name is Victor. Where are you? Victor. I'm hearing that name. Victor. Wonderful you've been. You are glorious. Please stand up. Faithful in all your ways. My help and my reward. You are glorious my god beautiful you are wonderful you've been you are glorious faithful in all your ways my help and my reward you are glorious what do you do my friend I want to pray for you there is a grace for leadership on you huh I want you to read go and look for miles Monroe's books and read huh any one of them you find on purpose and on leadership go and read it there is a great leadership grace upon you hold my hands 
in the name of Jesus I pray for you may that grace come upon you and shift you to a new level in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus the power of God is going to come on someone and you know sometimes I don't know why God does that with a loud shout please just bring that person here I want to prophesy to the person it's, I, I just saw that mighty hand of God just locating that person um, who is it Becky they call you or Rebecca it's like your name is Rebecca but the Rebecca or Becky or something like that who is that please we have to hurry up I want to pray for the sick now I'm hearing that name if, if you are the person and I call you you can just indicate by wave of hand and then you come very quickly uh, I'm hearing a name Chuku like Chuku something something Chuku um, there is something before it. the Chuku is the last face of the name maybe like um, what's your name huh no there's something before it before Chuku not just Chuku like that what is is it Izu or Uzo Chuku or something who is that you are the one Izu Chuku what's your name I want to pray for you what do you do okay you are that gentleman that showed me you are the one this gentleman you see I'm seeing you go abroad there is the grace for wealth on this young man you are seeing I want you to believe what I'm telling you he looks young he may not look like it but the dimension of resources that this young man will command will surprise many people be faithful be faithful love God with all your heart and remain connected I want to pray for you oh he made the cloth you are wearing oh this is fantastic this is beautiful when you dress kings you will receive the reward of kings I place upon your hand the grace for favor I open up a new territory for you in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ this is the worshiper lady is this her stand up I want to pray for you my dear the Lord himself is going to place an anointing on your voice your voice will go with the healing and the prophetic from today these two graces do not forget the healing and the prophetic you will raise sounds of worship they will start inviting you in strange ways in this land it's like suddenly a veil is open and every program wants to invite you don't be afraid make sure you love God more than money make sure you love God more than all these men when they come drive them away focus on Jesus and serve him with all your heart in the name of Jesus fresh grace for you I declare by the spirit of the living God pick her up in the name of Jesus I speak father let the voice of prophecy let the voice of healing what's her name peace in the name of Jesus I anoint you and I declare Asaba hear her voice in the name of Jesus the southeast of the Niger hear her voice I begin to connect you to strategic people they will start listening to your songs and placing a demand on you in the name of Jesus you will walk on yourself and a day will come you will stand and all the people you now admire you will sing with them I declare by the Spirit of God let it be so for you in Jesus name I pray amen and amen God bless you God bless you the Lord wants me to pray a prayer of oh dear our time is gone but can I pray a prayer of restoration because there are people who have lost things some of you really lost money this year some of you lost opportunities some of you put money in investments that just crashed and went away I, the prophetic is the official authorized spiritual avenue for restoration from Genesis to, Re, to Revelation we give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you the highest, the highest praise to the King. We give you the loudest, the loudest praise to the King. We lift up holy hands, highest praise to the King. You have taken all my shame, you have taken all my sorrows, you have taken all my weeping, you have taken all my tears, you have taken all reproach, 
you have taken all the sadness you have taken all my pain you have taken all my weakness you have made them yours the highest praise to the king he is taking all your losses he is taking all the sorrow he is taking all the weakness he is taking all disappointments we give you we give you we give you the highest praise we give you we give you we give you the highest praise we give you alas master for it was borrowed and the axe head fell do you know what made the axe head fall they said where we meet with you is too small let us move forward and go to the jordan it was a quest for advancement and while they were cutting the trees all of a sudden the axe head fell and he said it was borrowed and the prophet said where fell it let me speak to someone here you are saying alas it was borrowed that money was not my own it was a loan i was given i was given to supply goods and something happened now i am in debt i was supplying the car and something happened i was building and there was a problem in the name of jesus i declare by the spirit of god i command by prophecy between now and the next three months in the name of jesus the son of the living god everything that has left you that should not have left you i call it back by prophecy i call it back by prophecy I call it back by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for the sick and then we'll pray for destiny help us many of you are at a point in your life right now where you need the right see listen it is not every available person that helps you it is the one sent to you there were many widows in Zarephath but to none was Elijah sent just because people are available I don't know what it is I'm seeing something on this lady okay you are husband and wife I remember there is your wife is stepping into a strange dimension of favor see there is a spirit that has tried to tie down the glory of this great woman but in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands let the oil that distinguishes you too oh, that grace is coming on you it's two of you i'm praying for i stretch my hands in the name of jesus that oil for glory and greatness upon you as a couple receive that grace now it will mantle you and in the name of jesus doors will start opening on their own strange doors and strange opportunities in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for the sick i apologize our time is gone Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for miracles. I believe in the power of God. Come. That lady with brown hair, come. I want to pray for you. Where's, where's her family? They didn't? No, there's someone. You are not alone here. Where are you? Come. I want to pray for you. That every attack over your family. Programmed for 2021. I want to cancel it now. Huh? But at, at their, their, their... Okay. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing an attack. We have to pray. This is coming in the area of health. And I see what is not supposed to be good next year. But we cancel this. Dominion is the ability to see the schemings of darkness and to veto it and to cancel it father these people are workers in the house of god and i declare by the spirit of the living god the bible says they that be planted in the house of the lord they shall flourish in the courts of our god that even in old age they will be fat and flourishing 
that nothing in your life will give the devil legal access to plague your family i plead the blood upon the lintel of your family and i declare that when the spirit of death the waster and the avenger that when they come they will not find anyone in your family i shut the voice of mourning and lamentation from your family the bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous i declare that it will remain so all through 2021 no bad news for you i use them as a point of contact to prophesy over someone and a family that the devil is already programming whether it is death whether it is sickness so that it will be that you enter the new year as a family but you don't finish as a family in the name of jesus every spirit in partnership with human spirits to see to it that evil comes upon you may their evil return back to them in the name of jesus christ my dear shout jesus as loud as you can you this lady yes in the name of jesus christ i declare over you i'm seeing something that god is removing from your body i challenge every medical report in the name of jesus christ and i declare by the spirit of god nobody will diagnose you with any growth in your stomach in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ god bless you all now please place your hand i want to pray for you quickly i'm glad you wrote your prayer requests i'm going to pray on them please wherever you are trusting god for healing lay your hands there if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest let's do it quickly we have two or three minutes for this and i want you to agree with me i'll pray with you now you can stand in for your loved ones by faith we will shout hallelujah we will shout praise the lord we will dance in the spirit and rejoice we will shout hallelujah we will shout praise the lord we will dance Shila baratos as the akata barada balada katashiata. We will shout, Hallelujah! We will shout, Praise the Lord! In the name of Jesus Christ, please say Amen. Shout it, say Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ every spirit that is responsible for infirmity in lives and families here represented i curse you right now by the blood of jesus i curse you now by the blood of jesus i curse you now by the blood of jesus and in the mighty name of jesus i declare be healed now be healed now be delivered now be healed now migraine headaches be healed pile be healed peptic ulcer be healed irregular flow be healed lumps and growths of all sorts be healed bed wetting be delivered from it now eye conditions be healed ear conditions be healed blood conditions be healed recurrent sicknesses you treat it it comes back you treat it it comes back be healed from that demonic pattern skin problems be healed bone problems be healed in the name of jesus every family member connected to you who is sick and the devil is trust the trusting that they will continue to go down till they die in this conference in the name of jesus i minister life to them in the name of jesus there's someone i'm seeing that you have a problem i don't know if it's that you don't smell well or there's something with your 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 nose be healed right now i'm seeing someone around your groin area you have like a lymph node 
but that lymph node is painful and it doesn't seem to go the lord is healing you right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing severe pain around your chest region very severe pain the lord is healing you right now in the name of jesus christ the lord is healing you right now now whether i mentioned your case or not i declare to you by the spirit of the living god be healed right now i speak to your loved ones wherever they are may the angel of the lord's presence go right to your homes and bring healing for them in the name of jesus christ i want to pray on this request i have a covenant of answered prayer with god and i want to lay my hands upon your request if you're here to drop yours here very quickly we have a few minutes but you can do it very quickly something you know must live your life now something you know you do not want to see please believe it that these egyptians you see today let's be patient for one minute so that they will drop it you will shout hallelujah you will shout praise the lord we will dance in the spirit and rejoice help me victor we will shout hallelujah we will shout praise the lord we will dance in the spirit we will shout say we will shout hallelujah we will shout praise the lord shout hallelujah we will shout praise the lord hallelujah the bible says jesus speaking said he that told you have not asked for anything he says ask and you will receive that your joy may be complete listen he that told you have not asked for anything ask he says and you will receive you don't need to receive things to have joy but you need testimonies for your joy to be complete it says hitherto you have not asked for anything ask please let them let them bring it again that you will receive that your joy may be complete that's why i sang that song that i'm singing now that you will shout hallelujah you will shout praise the lord stretch your hands towards me and just pray in the spirit i will go down my knees in one minute and make contact with your prayers and that the god of all flesh you don't have to kneel just where you are unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come father let there be miracles signs wonders by the spirit let the joy of your people be complete impossible situations are you praying when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. He said, they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. He says, the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the Spirit. We will shout, hallelujah. We will shout, praise the Lord. We will dance in the spirit and rejoice forevermore i will shout hallelujah i will shout praise the lord i will dance in the spirit and rejoice oh lord oh god oh, turning things around yeah. Oh, Lord, oh, 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 
turning things around all over is turning things around for my good that's what god is doing we are praying over this request we will shout hallelujah you will shout praise the lord you will dance in the spirit and rejoice evermore father i declare over your people that the egyptians you see today in the name of jesus you will see them no more forever the egyptians that plague you today i declare upon you that you will see them no more forever prophetically i stand upon this request the same way i'm standing upon them every challenge that has risen above you i bring it under your feet now i bring it under your feet in the name of jesus i bring it under your feet in the name of jesus now please i'd like you to receive the prophecy that i'm going to bring but before them pastor i come with your wife let me anoint you for the next level of power and efficiency we will shout hallelujah we will shout praise the lord we will dance in the spirit and rejoice forevermore you will shout hallelujah Ezekiel 47 and he showed me a river that flowed from the east side of the temple and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet and then he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my knees and then he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins then he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river overflowing and that everywhere that river went the fish that was dead would come back alive at every level of the anointing there is room for more i told you that the dimension and the quality of grace upon your life is what controls the possibilities around you thou anointest my head with oil not my cup it is my head that is anointed but i see the result in my cup i want to pray for you I know the sacrifices that they have made and i love them from the depth of my heart he says i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you be established in one minute if you love them stretch your hands speak every good thing you know that should come upon a man of god and his wife pray from the depth of your heart especially for those of you who are members of in gathering pray for your pastors fresh fire oh god keep them let them be men of character keep them the things that bring the great down separates them from it oh god keep them at the cutting edge of your program in this city and in this region prosper them raise helpers raise workers raise faithful and loyal sons and daughters few more seconds pray for them hallelujah in the name of jesus christ father i thank you for my dear son pastor ike help him oh god you are the helper of man oh, 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 oh. your lifting has come oh, 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 oh. your lifting has come oh, oh, oh. Your rising has come. Oh, 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 
your help has come in the name of Jesus I declare upon you and your dear wife I measure by prophecy a thousand cubits and I shift you to deeper levels of impact I leave a prophecy upon your lives rise to higher dimensions of kingdom influence I open once again the gate of Asaba and I prophesy to you may the city hear your voice John 17 Jesus spoke and he said all that you have given me I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition I declare that everyone that should come to you will come to you I lay my hands upon you and I pray the grace that was upon Noah that made the animals come on their own two by two seven by seven may that grace come upon you let it draw faithful men let it draw quality helpers they will come to this ark of in gathering in the name of jesus i declare the spirit of revelation multiplied upon your life in the name of jesus i prophesy psalm 112 upon you blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands i declare upon you that your seed shall be mighty upon earth and that the generation of the upright shall be blessed i speak upon you that wealth and riches shall be in your house you belong to a family and a tribe that is mysteriously blessed may that blessing flow to you i pray that the spirit of revelation will rest upon you you will walk in signs and wonders and miracles the lord multiply your influence your voice will not be short i pray that the word of the lord upon your lips will go to the ends of the earth your workers are blessed all who are connected to this grace you are blessed the partners the friends the well-wishers you are blessed i bless you in the name of jesus i speak to you both that everybody that fights you goes down instantly in the name of jesus christ my god continues to lift you you will ever remain students in the school of the spirit the lord will make you men and women of formidable character the lord will bless you you will lay up gold as dust in this next season of your life experience wealth and abundance god will raise instructions to bless you the lord you the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let me pray for everyone now son of man can these bones live and he said only thou knowest and he said prophesy and you will tap into that blessing i'm seeing a serpent i command that snake this lady i'm not seeing a human being i'm seeing a serpent in the realm of the spirit i declare release that destiny now my god judge you in the name of jesus the christ of god release this family and release this destiny in the name of jesus lose everything you have tied in this family and i declare that you pack your load and you go forever and every demonic betrothal that has happened that is hijacking the destiny of this lady and her family i curse you by the god of heaven every legal access upon which you are operating in this life i declare in the name of jesus bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us that he nailed it to his cross so on your mark set and you go out of this destiny now never to return again in the name of jesus christ can i pray for you father every door that has been closed over your people in the name of jesus christ from tonight and hence may that door be open and remain open in the name of jesus can i speak over your finances the grace that attracts helpers attracts resources and attracts opportunity for every one of you i lay my hands on my head and in the name of jesus may that grace rest upon you strange business ideas strange opportunities some of you need jobs may my god give you jobs some of you need business ideas may god give you business ideas some of you need sponsors and helpers may god raise them for you i command that you prosper in the name of jesus christ
I pray for your spiritual life. In a time when people's passion for God is going down and drying out, I pray like never before, fresh fire and hunger for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus, you will continue to love the Lord with all your heart. I pray for your families. Everything that represents shame and reproach, I declare it leaves you now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where it takes you a long time to take one step, I shorten your journey to destiny. By the spirit of prophecy, I introduce speed to your life. Speed, receive it. Speed to your destiny. Speed to your ministry. All those who are students here, I declare the grace to do well, to excel and to finish strong. May that grace come upon you. All of you who are trusting God for admission, I declare the wait is over right now. Those of you who are trusting God to graduate and finish well, in the name of Jesus, I release upon you the finisher's anointing. Go and excel in the name of Jesus. Every business that has been grounded here, hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you by the voice of prophecy and I declare between now and the next three months, in the name of Jesus, jack back to life. every dead prayer life here your passion for god you started on fire from the beginning of the year but right now it looks like everything has dried up fresh fire upon your altar in the name of jesus christ the lord bless you in jesus name let's touch on one or two things first second peter chapter one and verse eight second peter chapter 1 and verse 8 for if these things be in you and abound they make you that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ for if these things it says verse 9 but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins even though this is speaking with respect to salvation but there is a lesson to draw there verse 8 says if these things be in you and remain abound means remain that means there are certain things that must be in us and must remain to make us fruitful to make us productive the bible says if these things are in you they will ensure that you never are barren and you never are unfruitful fruitfulness is one of the first commands that god gave us in genesis chapter one we turn there please genesis one and when you read from verse 26 down to 28 he said let us make man in our own image after our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea that is another realm the birds of the air the air is another realm the cattle and the earth is another realm and everything that creeps upon the earth 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them then 28 says and god blessed them he blessed them by saying number one be fruitful be fruitful number two multiply three replenish the earth subdue it and then have dominion so fruitfulness is a command that god has given according to god's design for man we're never supposed to be barren in any way fruitfulness is a command and it should be experienced in our lives when jesus walked upon the earth he saw a fig tree are we bible students and he saw that the fig tree had leaves but did not have fruit and he came to eat of the fruit and he did not deliver fruit and he cursed it he said 
no man will eat of you again because you were not designed to be taken from the earth and yet not yield fruitfulness is very powerful in fact the bible says herein is our father glorified john chapter 15 and verse 8 john 15 and verse 8 this is how god is glorified that ye bear how many much fruit much fruit bearing much fruit proves that i mentored you it proves that you are my disciples god wants us to bear much fruit he wants us to have results in our lives are we together now when you live a christian experience without sufficient results you will not be able to bring glory to the name of the lord number one number two you will not even bring honor to yourself herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit and by doing so you shall be my disciples but like as i began to teach in the will i call it the main session now yesterday night there are principles that are responsible for fruitfulness there are principles that are responsible for fruitfulness not knowing listen carefully not knowing those principles will cost you sincerely and it will cost you severely the bible says they know not psalm 82 and verse 5 neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in verse 7 it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so while it is true that you have a great destiny in christ it is true that you are supposed to reign in the class of god but not having knowledge they know not neither will they understand it says you shall die like mere men praise the name of the lord i feel stirred in my spirit in just maybe 10 15 minutes to share with you one of the laws that control the flow of the blessings of the lord including finances since we're in a partners meeting just to talk to you a bit on finances and i want you to believe me that i know what i'm saying praise the lord the bible says the things that we have seen the things that we have heard even the things that our hands have handled of the word of life this is what we teach you um most people believe that preachers know nothing about money they know nothing about the economy they just preach the cross and that's it and um, it's not it's not exactly true god grants us grace and understanding so that we can guide and mentor people accordingly if you listen to what i'm sharing with you within a few minutes it literally can change your life the pandemic has brought um so many corporations billion dollar corporations to their knees some of our families right now maybe there are people who have been downsized lost jobs there are people wondering where will money come from and you don't have to live in that kind of fear isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for your light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon you these are irrefutable principles that are backed up by god's power and god's integrity praise the name of the lord the law of favor let's discuss the law of favor just pray in one minute while you're writing father open my eyes to see in the name of jesus open my eyes to see there is more that you can do with me i already have a heart to bless and finance your kingdom therefore open my understanding to this truth and let me understand hallelujah praise the lord exodus chapter 3 please and verse 21 exodus 3 and verse 21 exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 let's read it together one to read 
and i will give these people favor aha uh -huh, in the sight of the egyptians and the proof is that when you shall go ye shall not go empty emptiness has an explanation when your hands when your resources when your account when your destiny is empty it looks like a natural phenomenon but i tell you there is a spiritual explanation as to why people are empty there are christians who are empty financially speaking there are christians who are empty there's no help there's no system of rescue they are at the mercy of situations and circumstances and most people give all kinds of flimsy excuses that uh, because uh, you know i'm in an environment that is not my tribe you know and all those kinds of things but the bible says i will give so god is a giver and he can give favor i will give you favor in the sight of the egyptians these were people who for 430 years had kept god's people in captivity and god said when i give you favor it does not matter that they were egyptians they will still bless you and stop you from going empty may that be someone's testimony in the name of jesus christ psalm 89 and verse 17 psalm 89 and verse 17 it says for thou art the glory of their strength and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted there is a dimension of authority and dignity there is a dimension of influence that you cannot rise to until the favor of god comes upon you that the favor of god can cause the horn the symbol of honor and authority upon a man's life to be exalted in thy favor our horn shall be exalted one last scripture 102 psalms and verse 13 popular scripture psalm 102 and verse 13 thou shall arise and have mercy upon joshua selman for the time to favor him yea the set time is come there is a time to favor a man there is a time to favor a people and it says for this you shall arise and have mercy upon your zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come favor is the number one reason why people succeed in this kingdom please believe this the number one reason why people succeed in this kingdom is because god showed them favor all testimonies in life all kingdom testimonies are directly related to the favor of god all kingdom testimonies when you hear that something wonderful has happened in the life of a man financially or otherwise somewhere in the equation of that testimony there was the factor of favor in it it is true that one person ordained to favor you can open a hundred a thousand doors infinite doors of opportunities just one person i'm just sharing with you very briefly it's just an admonishment you may want to write this favor does not happen only once if it happens only once it is breakthrough favor must be consistent to be called favor now this is a mistake that is made probably world over people just believe favor should just happen once and that's it no no if it is favor it must be consistent regardless the prevailing circumstances you can have favor once with one person but that phenomenon of favor should not stop are we together now very very important luke chapter 2 and verse 52 now reveals to us that there are two dimensions of favor that all men must contend for luke chapter 2 and verse 52 let's read together please and jesus increased or grew uh-huh in wisdom in stature in favor with god and favor with man so scripture reveals to us 
that there are broadly two dimensions of favor there is favor with god and there is favor there are two different dimensions of favor it is still god that gives all but there is favor with god favor with god will open you up to supernatural encounters favor with god will open you up to strange dimensions of grace it's it's a spiritual honor that god gives you like it happened to mary he looked at her and said blessed are you you are highly favored blessed are you among women there's no record of anybody giving her anything but she had favor with god are we together now yes there are certain anointings and certain graces that people have found in their life it's not because of their hard work it's an election of grace jacob have i loved esau have i hated god just located them and opened them to dimensions of spiritual power and grace i believe that i'm one of such people more than the sacrifices more than the prayer the fasting there are dimensions of results in my life i cannot trace to any effort of mine very supernatural and angelic activities outside and have when jesus visited me i cannot honor remember honor praying you. and asking for a visitation i might have done so but i mean when when i had several visions and impartations in the spirit it's 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 purely the favor of god so you can have favor with god but when you want to excel in this you can visit us on facebook on www.facebook.com and favor with the system of growth and www.twitter.com slash koinonia underscore eni right now you can All also download our messages on www.foreshared.com. Jesus has a blessing came from God to the world of God's life and earth. All messages come from God through men to men. Now, if you understand this, is very, very powerful. All blessings come from God through men to men. Please let me have three people here, just quickly, maybe three, any three at all. I just want to use you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Just stand here, stand here, stand here. Watch this. So let's use my phone as the blessing. Just stand facing me. Just turn this way. Lift it up. This is a blessing that is supposed to come to your destiny. You stand in the middle here. This is the recipient here in Asaba. And scripture tells you that this promise, call it finance, call it wealth, call it whatever it is, destiny help us. So God is telling you, this is what I want to give you. But his system of transportation is that he cannot bring it directly to you. If it must come to you on earth, it must pass through a human vessel. So the word became flesh in the womb of a woman in order to reach us now if you don't understand this you will waste your time with a lot of superstitious talk god i don't need any man in my life you just bless me it's a it's a it looks like it's a very very foolish prayer now when you say i don't need men in terms of demonstrating the sovereignty of god you are right but as far as operating in the cosmos is concerned not even jesus ignored that law are you getting what i'm saying this is very important because here is the mistake that christians make i don't need this person get out of my way lord you are the one i worship you are the one i love it is within your power to bless me if you want to bless me to hell with any man i don't care you just love this and god is trying to tell you you are wrong i created the system and so for a long time we keep having visions for a long time we keep having this oh jesus when you died no man was there but how did you hear the gospel all blessings lend this it comes from god through men to men that means if god says yes and a man says no that yes remains yes only in the realm of the spirit as far as your destiny is concerned 
believe me the answer will be no are we together yes. from god through men to men the favor for your next level from god but is currently in the hands and at the mercy of a man that means you need to understand how to access from god and how to access from men are we together now if you do not understand this nothing will ever happen to you from god through men to men when i discovered this it changed my life i stopped praying some of those unwise prayers of course i love god i will never place any man before god never but then as far as the dynamics of operating in this cosmos is concerned you will be surprised how easy it is for doors to be open but because you ignore men for god so loved the man you are ignoring that he left his throne and he came to die for those men and he said now you go and connect men i desire this man but jesus had to become a man he could not save men as god he had to become a man this is what the bible calls the mystery of godliness we're bible students that god became a man if god became a man then there's something about men we must study are we together now yes so all blessings my lifting the, the bible tells you you shall be exalted above you shall not be beneath i believe that and i see that this reality is with god but not understanding the systems of the kingdom will put you in ignorance and you will sit down for a long time today we are celebrating you as partners and leaders ultimately if you ask pastor ike and his wife who has been responsible for what is happening in this ministry they will not say men they will say god and they are not lying but had they ignored you they will be surprised that they are reading scripture and reading scripture and yet god had to touch your heart to believe so god came through for them but he came through men from god through men to men trouble comes from satan through men to men in any case the middle man is a man Are we together? So, we are studying this one. We already know that God is constant. The same yesterday, today and forever. This is where the trouble is. This one is not the same yesterday, today and forever. He can love you today and change tomorrow. He can hate you yesterday and change his mind tomorrow. So we must study intrinsically what will make this man look like God in your life. What I mean is that what will make him consistent. Are we together? That there is something you can do from your end that will compel this man regardless of his vacillating character. There is a business you can do between you and God that will compel this man to respond to you directly as though god were responding to you this is what i want to teach you now please thank you sirs hallelujah we're discussing favor are you blessed already write this down favor is not a miracle favor is a spiritual reaction hmm. church of the lord jesus christ favor is not a miracle it's a definite spiritual reaction that can be initiated now you see let me tell you this the reason why many believers never walk in favor is because of the very definition of favor the way we have defined favor in the body of christ is why people don't walk in it here is the average believer's definition of favor favor is unmerited access is that not what you've been taught and, and there's nothing wrong with that the mere fact that you hear that word unmerited already tells you i don't have anything to do so if god wants to favor me and you hear testimonies like i was just sitting on my own 
suddenly a call came and now i am blessed praise the lord <laughs> you really believe that now the people are sincere people but all that is nonsense if you if you believe like that you will suffer your life will be very hard now don't go around criticizing any pastor or anybody and say oh god that's your difference. don't don't do that let's go to scripture proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 we believe scripture do you believe the bible so let the bible speak for itself ready read one to read uh-huh read it one more time pastor ike's wife gave birth to pastor ike's child so who is the mother the wife that gave birth now the bible says good understanding gives birth to a child and the name of that child is what and that transgression is also a pregnant woman she can give birth what is the name of the child hardship has an explanation this is bible don't you know listen if you allow your society to indoctrinate you you will believe a lot of rubbish that will destroy you why is life happening to me like this it's not fair and yet you do not know that that ignorance transgression means a, a system of default you are defaulting from a a prescribed pattern you may be sincere and you may be well-meaning but you will still give birth to hardship and you see the thing about the womb of a woman is theoretically speaking she can give birth as many times the womb will not say i'm tired i gave birth once that means that trouble can keep multiplying just because you gave birth to one in january you will still get that womb pregnant again you will give birth february get that that's why i told you if favor is if favor it must be what consistent you now get everything i tell you i can prove it from scripture it must be consistent are we together write it down in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters deliverance is happening here there is a dimension of deliverance that does not come by casting it comes by preaching it says to preach deliverance to the captive it's not every dimension of deliverance that comes by casting and falling preach deliverance there is a reorientation of your understanding every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown one more time it's a prophecy for you every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown hallelujah you need favor to achieve your goals and your dreams in life and proverbs 13 and verse 15 gives us the key that there is a kind of understanding you must have that produces favor it was the holy ghost that delivered me from this age-long imbalance i kept believing that favor was unmerited there is only one dimension of favor that is unmerited the favor that relates to the salvation of men but even that requires an engaging in your own part are we together according to romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 that the word is nigh thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt believe with your heart the lord jesus 
confess with your mouth thou shalt be saved the law is in verse 10 for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so in as much as the substitutionary sacrifice is done you still have to participate by verbalizing your belief for it to become a reality in your life favor is very merited it is favor must be activated for it to work in your life it does not work by default you want to see the favor of god in your life in fact let me define favor what exactly is favor write this down favor is when god and men participate in your success when god and men commit themselves to your progress when god and men participate in your success supplying resources supplying relationships supplying a leverage that's favor when god and men decide to invest in your destiny invest in your success they bring with them resources they bring with them um relationships they provide a system of leverage that gives you an upper hand in life that is favor so we're going to deal with the laws of favor right now and um, in this session very quickly i will give us we have about i have in my notes here about six of them i'm not sure we'll deal with all six we'll just touch somewhere and then we'll pray please believe what i'm teaching you it will change your life hallelujah are you ready number one the first key that activates favor seeing then that favor is not automatic it is engaged and you can make it happen consistently in your life the first key is called honor the first key that activates favor with men is called honor honor show me everywhere honor is favor is around the corner too favor and honor is like goodness and mercy they go together what is honor the celebrating the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of men for their uniqueness honor is the discerning comma the celebrating and the rewarding of men for their uniqueness the discerning the celebrating the rewarding of men for their uniqueness watch this my dear come let's celebrate this lady just do what i'm asking you to do keep clapping don't stop stand up everybody keep clapping keep clapping just keep doing what i'm asking you to do don't stop clapping you're clapping for her now watch this stop god bless you what happened to you while they were clapping i was very happy i was very happy now you talk bad about me to this lady and see what she does to you i have left a memory of honor for i didn't need to tell her what she did she doesn't even care what she did all she knows is that you have given me a perception the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved valued and appreciated write this down the highest psychological need of any man on earth the highest psychological need of any man including yourself is the need to feel loved 
the need to feel valued the need to feel appreciated the highest psychological need of any man at all is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel appreciated now i single this lady out of this crowd i brought her on stage here put my arms around her and ask you to lavishly clap for her for whatever reason she knows it must be a good thing are we together now this lady will want to be everywhere around me because the memory of giving her an impression that she's valuable will remain with her and every time she sees me she will remember me for that if there is anything good this lady can do to help my life automatically she will begin to engage it are you seeing now yeah. imagine that this lady is somewhere right now so this lady look at this if this lady for instance has an opportunity to speak well on my behalf what do you think she's going to say about me this man is a great man whatever it would take now there are times you don't have the authority to speak at the gate yet you will have to depend on those who are already there and whatever you did to them before they got there will become the report card of you i have programmed favor over my life as far as this lady is concerned it will be easy for the holy ghost to use her now to bless me because i have given her an impression so now that i have shown her honor i can go back and say lord thank you the holy spirit now can use her and say remember this man are we blessed thank you my dear god bless you let's celebrate her again please sit please sit god bless you honor look at me the dishonor of believers is why many many people tongue-talking christians wonderful christians never rise there are preachers today who are born again but there is no honor in their life or no favor because they climb on everybody's pulpit and tear them down tear the man of god tear the woman of god tear everybody in the church down if i come here and i bully you people with spirituality and tear you down and do this you will respect me but if you have your opportunity i will never come here again this is what has happened to many people there are people who have attended conferences and meetings only once and the next time the board met they said don't bring this man again there is the memory of pain and they continue to close doors let me tell you you can earn a living practicing honor literally like if they say where are you working in the local government where are you working gt bank where are you working i earn a living practicing honor it will take a fool to laugh at you you can literally earn a living practicing honor Are we blessed it's one of the most powerful spiritual laws aside from the law of encounter that i learned i thank god that he taught me this it has changed my life i have met people today that i have no business meeting god has made me decades ahead of my contemporaries because of this one law honor believe me i have seen people do things that i cannot imagine what pastor ike is doing for you now is called what honor an exclusive meeting for just you alone now you see this this looks like a little thing but this is honor you see nobody runs away from an atmosphere of honor you can literally 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 turn the heart of people overnight if you master honor there's something yoruba people do during I, i'm not sure that they practice it here but during weddings once they discern you're a rich man there are these people that play drums they call your name and start dancing and they dance and bend and roll and dance and you didn't plan to bring out any money but they dance and call your name 
who builds this road if not you and while they are dancing there's pressure on your wife and she's saying sort these people out sort these people out if not you who is it that can wave his hand and there will be no more sun over this land you know they bring all those kinds of things and while they are flaunting you they put pressure on your integrity you will carry money that you did not plan to give and once they collect it they wave you number two boss people you represent 70 naira or 100 naira to them and the moment they see you beautiful lady ah, ah, you can enter they are looking for one more passenger and for that 10 15 seconds ha ah, look at this lady you don't enter that or that look at a clean bus here once you enter that bus and they collect your 70 or 100 naira that's the end but they did something to you and for that few seconds you felt like royalty honor works like a charm i tell you master honor and you will play life like a chess this is only one over six so oh. so when i tell you favor is not a miracle it is a reaction i know what i'm saying the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding this is for honor's sake i have done things in my life to communicate honor that has changed my life overnight people have done all kinds of things for me supernatural manifestations of honor there are people that i met only once and the impression of honor that i give them I never knew that they would get to circles where my destiny helpers were and they so spoke about me and because of that a lot of doors profound doors have opened up to me Zacchaeus showed Jesus honor he climbed a tree and said I would let me respect this man and Jesus looked at him and said Zacchaeus you are this like the cbn governor and you still humble yourself come down i'm going to your house jesus your jesus left where he was going and went to the house of zacchaeus and because of that many people were set free zacchaeus said i've been cheating you i confess i will return your money notice how jesus treated nobles he did not hide it the centurion said come to my house he said no you're a man of authority the centurion said i know what it means to be i'm under the authority of the roman government and i can speak jesus i, I won't inconvenience you you are a busy man i respect your schedules and jesus said who taught you this i've not found this kind of understanding no not in israel this is the ladder that we climb mysteriously from any direction in life believe me when i tell you that i've met people in this nation and around this our cosmos a bit in my own little way and sometimes i'm with these people and i'm asking myself what are you doing here honor is a ladder it can escort you and say come and sit down among the great let's hurry up number two the second key that activates favor is called value the second key that activates favor is called value proverbs 18 16 a man's gift <laughs> make it room for him and brings him before great men this is a covenant scripture that for as long as a man's gift is there refined not just a raw gift a man's value not just a man's potential uh -uh. a man's value a measure of your usefulness to god to men 
to society that if you possess and refine the ability to provide solutions and to solve problems there is a blessing attached that it must create a space of relevance for you and that it will usher you to the table of greatness a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men i am a testament that this scripture is true this is also one of the reasons why like i would observe men of god are blessed people say why are men of god blessed they don't do anything just talk no they are providing solutions just because the solutions are supernatural does not make them any less solutions they are real solutions a man's gift we were having a discussion with pastor ike while we were coming and i told him i said i hear that the highest number of billionaires are within the southeastern part of nigeria and he said yes and we we're discussing a few people calling names costaris and then a number of these great people and he told me many of them are traders and then many of them you know manufacturers like innocent that's his name and all those people now why will they be poor they are providing real value are we together watch this please help me with this bottle of water yes this is somebody's product is that true you don't know the owner he does not know you yet he's with your money right now yet you have to from the habitation of people who don't refine their value you will continue to live at the mercy of such situations and circumstances i challenge my people to be valuable and to be competent turn your value to products and services listen to three of my messages let me recommend them quickly just write it there under value number one be fruitful it's a message please look for it online listen to it number two the power of productivity the power of productivity number three extraordinary fruitfulness extraordinary fruitfulness if you still have the grace to stretch you can add success systems it's a three-part series but the first three would suffice for your learning so that you understand value when god taught me this i made up my mind and i vowed that i was going to be valuable and i was going to be competent i would not come and stand and quote scriptures and quote nonsense you work on yourself you are valuable that every time you have the opportunity to dispense the word or to do whatever it is that you're doing you will be so exceptional you see are you business people can i talk a little of business there is a law in business called the law of compensation write it down i want to teach you under value is a business law called the law of compensation this is a law that governs rewards and it says our reward i'm quoting it now write it down please our rewards will always be in exact proportion to then you put a colon our rewards will always be in exact proportion to colon number one the demand or the need for what we do our rewards will always be in exact proportion to then a colon number one the need or the demand for what we do number two our ability put in bracket skill our ability to do what we do Number one, the need or the demand for what we do. Number two, our ability to do what we do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing us. The difficulty in replacing us. 
this is called the law of compensation this is the law that governs rewards i remain valuable to you to the degree to which it's difficult to find another joshua selman not just in terms of impartation or multiplication but in terms of unique expression hallelujah ladies buy a lot of jewelries and there's english gold there's dubai gold there's all those your kinds of gold and you can have a little gem like this that is three million two million why because sometimes you have only hundred of them in the whole world they are scarce and scarcity is a measure of value is that true the degree to which you study this in developmental economics that scarcity is a measure of value so when your life becomes like that gem during the lockdown how many of you watch videos about looting that happened in uh, warehouses you watch videos like that now notice there was no publicity come and loot rice come and loot indomie number two they didn't give anybody the skill or the formula the moment people found out there was food in that house they invented the skills by themselves question if you become like that house what happens to you the same way they could not ignore it the sick the young the old they did not say what is the age of the person who put rice in that warehouse that was not a problem what was the religion of the person when you become like that warehouse no matter where you go to whether it is the wilderness all men will seek for you this is a formula that god gave me in life and in ministry a lot of people say young people talk only to young people old people talk only to old people i said it's not true it depends on the value you are carrying when you are sick you don't ask for a young girl an old doctor whoever can treat you genuinely are we together if you need to take injection and someone of 21 years tells you of 70 years turn you will not say you are a young child no you are the one who is sick you will turn and receive that injection with honor and receive it again and again till you are fine are we together i pray for you that a life of mediocrity will be far from your life in the name of jesus that you will obtain the grace to sit down work on yourself refine yourself whether it is in ministry some of you are in business some of you are in career listen becoming valuable for some of you it will require going to get extra certifications that will give you an edge go for it don't allow mediocres to sit down and just watch you down for some of you you will need extra trainings it may not be formal trainings but you will need extra trainings for some of you will you will need personalized systems of mentorship and apprenticeship please sit down one man in this nation who owns an oil and gas company very big oil and gas company is my friend and so one time we we're discussing with him during the lockdown we we're having lunch at my house and i told him i said so how how have you been able to cope through these things and he launched another business and this year during the lockdown he brought a a brand new rolls royce phantom one million dollars 470 million naira i said wow why did you have to spend that much money and he said um apostle i can't lie to you god bless me i said yeah, is that why you should spend so much money I said what happened and he said he started producing a particular product and i said when did you start this he said he went to lagos and disguised himself and worked for three weeks in a company that does the same products because he wanted they never knew that was a billionaire working for three weeks it was when some people came to patronize that product and someone saw his watch and said ah you must be a thief you are serving in this place with an apron and you are having this kind of watch and someone looked at him and said are you not so 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 and so that was the end of it he didn't come there again 
he went up to go and set his own firm and within seven months he made billions of naira in this nation the man you were talking about Koscharis, was the one who sold the vehicles for him listen i'm not i'm not this is not about money at all i'm just telling you that if you invest in competence i assure you it's an investment that the returns is guaranteed i have challenged my people to continue to strive to be competent incompetence is dangerous you will hang around greatness but never benefit from it you will always be around the corridors of greatness but you may never have the opportunity to benefit from it i made up my mind that whether it is in leadership or ministry or any of these aspects that i will be able to bless and build people i mentor a lot of business people i mentor a lot of politicians and sometimes they are amazed because when they hear me teach or they listen to my messages especially for those who are meeting me for the first time they assume that all i'm going to discuss is just dimensions in the spirit realms of the spirit and then they are surprised when i begin to discuss matters that relate to their industry and they say how did you learn this and i tell them knowledge is not a gift you buy the truth you buy the truth you sell it not if you are interested in your destiny you must invest in being valuable i'm 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 far from being satisfied at my level of competence far from it compared to where i'm going i'm just a step out of the cave and i continue to strive to to all of the disciplines of routine that makes for multiplied value you must pay the price to build that in your spirit and i guarantee you that for as long as you do that it is impossible for you to be ignored there are not too many like that in society so by the time you pay that price you become like that city that is set on a hill it says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel make up your mind that you are going to be extraordinary make up your mind that you are going to go all the way when i was learning on, on, on the anointing i went all the way with the holy ghost all the way with leadership all the way number three are you getting blessed so let's do a quick recap what's the first one number one honor number two value what is value a measure of your uniqueness a measure of your problem solving abilities you must solve problems that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization don't just say i have problem solving skills is it needed and is it useful hallelujah number three the third key that activates favor in your life is a character quality called integrity write it down please integrity is the third key that activates favor integrity comes from the word integer integer means sameness it means consistent integrity is the quality of being consistent consistent to and with your values integrity is the quality of sameness the quality of being consistent to and with your values regardless the consequence that's integrity regardless the consequence i will not collect bribe but you know it will cost you yes i am aware but i will not collect bribe boko haram until now were people of integrity with respect to their goals even though they are bad people but if they tell you we are coming to kill they really will come so listen what makes you respected is not truthfulness it's integrity boko haram are not truthful people in terms of subscribing to scripture but they are people of integrity 
if they tell you we are coming to bomb you they really are coming so anytime you receive a threat by them the army takes them serious people take you serious to the degree to which they perceive you to be people of integrity why do they use the faces of athletes on products because for some time they have demonstrated a level of competence and integrity to their art integrity is very powerful make up your mind that you will be people of integrity lack of integrity looks beneficial in the short term but in the long term you will destroy so many things in your life integrity i'm selling this product i will be sincere i will be true i open my shop by eight i lock by ten let everybody know you for that you see that so that whoever wants to patronize you knows what time to meet you integrity integrity creates predictability to your character people can vouch for you they can say i know this person i know this person mandela it was because of his integrity that he went to prison and for 20 years he did not change his mind he remained in that prison many lawyers would come and talk to him look negotiate with these people and um they can allow you he said no way i was in south africa in the mandela mall and i saw 3d portraits of him and you would see him in the prison with his gown and you see him cutting stones and although he's dead and gone now people will stand in front of that statue and just look at a man who epitomized integrity and they would just weep and come up with resolutions about their life they literally own south africa because a man was willing to defy the consequences integrity is costly it will cost you many things it was the integrity of joseph that landed him in prison integrity is not always convenient don't get the idea that integrity bails you out overnight no integrity can keep you in pain for a long time but that's the price but the day the god of justice comes to vindicate your business vindicate your family vindicate your life it will surprise you he will always reward you make up your mind to reject a life of compromise of any kind make up your mind that you will be consistent don't be someone who is very easy once they want to be corrupt they say who do we use now suddenly it's your is you that come to the picture of the people you know there are people once you want to do evil they are the first they know how to arrange things you want to bribe you want to cheat you just say ah who can make this thing happen suddenly they just call and say bros where are you this is what i want to say ah consider it done they, they know how to do it may you never be associated with evil in the name of jesus christ you must make up your mind to be a person of integrity i give you a disclaimer it will cost you you will make enemies but it is better to be truthful to god in sincerity than to be men pleasers and to be compromising people years ago in this country you could come to a shop and not find the owner of the shop there and pick what you want to pick and drop the money there and leave it and the owner will come back later he will see his product missing but he sees the money there but right now you leave your shop open do you know years ago my car we stopped somewhere in kaduna state is a is where they sell spare parts honestly within how many minutes you know this thing that you used to close tire i'm the uh, what they call it now someone the valve i don't know i can't remember seeing anybody around my car the kind of expertise and mastery they used to remove the entire valve the uh that that thing you the cover of the valve all four i checked and we found out there was nothing there we had to go back to the same market now and buy it now do you know the same energy it takes to be wicked is the same energy it takes to be creative whoever can steal a valve without your knowledge
can set up a security a security outfit a security and a logistics outfit are we together look at these guys that pick pocket you are sitting in a bus and in five minutes they've removed it why don't you come up with a security outfit but this is this the kind of world that we live in make up your mind that you'll be a man or a woman of integrity unbending society our world today will see you as strange because we are in a world of fake lives fake everything fake whatever it is look at this young man what's his name now this guy that used to flaunt wealth uh, yes but i don't know him i don't know anything about him but you can you can imagine the end of those kinds of things you see that now this guy only god knows how long he's going to spend in prison there the same time he used being fake he would have been diligent and he would have still been wealthy never fake what can be real make up your mind i will not fake what can be real the lord will grant me grace i will press with integrity the goal integrity is the seed for trust people will not trust you for nothing make up your mind that you'll be a person of integrity but the next key how to activate favor number four relationships be fruitful means be relational it takes relationship for fruitfulness to happen ask a man and his wife be fruitful means be relational there cannot be fruitfulness without relationships that means you must understand men i wish i dwelt here because this is where many people do not have that knowledge relationships are advantageous connections you need relationships in your life i'm here today purely on relationship my relationship with pastor ike and his wife and all of you by extension that i love so much it's a huge sacrifice there are people today who maybe their program would have held today and i would have come if they know that i'm standing here i'm talking to just a few groups of people they will almost be offended and say what is this you would have been maybe in a stadium talking to people winning souls what are you doing you are coming to talk how many people how much are they giving you you see those kinds of mentality but relationship is greater than money it's amazing what people can do to you when they like you if all you know is my hand you are limited to what is on my hand but when you have my heart you are limited to both what you are i mean you have access to what is in my hands and whatever is in my heart too there are people today if i have a need maybe i need some favor or anything not not necessarily financial with one call please would you look into this person's matter that's the end of it relationships are very powerful it is your responsibility to edit quality godly visionary relationships in your life don't get into that illusion that you must relate with everybody no edit your relationships as you rise edit your relationships you are as wealthy as the contacts in your phone you look at the contacts in your phone when god begins to lift you he introduces quality relationships in your life the contacts in your phone literally begin to change when kidnappers kidnap people how do they know whether their lives are qualitative they collect their phones and they run to from a to z honorable this senator this pastor this prophet this they say you'll bring 50 million no way you can't bring 250 000. not with these relationships you have are we together ah daddy this then you put honorable in bracket daddy this you put geo daddy this mrs this ceo so so furnitures miss these are the contacts in your phone they'll say you are not going anywhere the rest can go we can bring 250 500 but you you must bring 5 million because they expect that for you to be connected to these kinds of people it must reflect in your life when god wants to lift you 
he connects you to valuable relationships men and women who provide leverage for you are you blessed but you must understand the laws of relationships listen to my message success systems i think that should be part two or part three i teach on the laws of relationships you need to understand the principles that govern relationships tolerance forbearance adaptation the bible says he that desires friends must first show himself friendly etc you can learn those things the last time i will stop here the last key that activates favor is the power of favor provoking prayers you can literally pray favor to your life i prayed for favor for one month non-stop one month one month of intense bombarding the gates of heaven lord my life does not have any advantage by default there is no single uncle today who said ah god has i don't even have them most of my uncles are all dead so i i didn't come from a background that provided that leverage i listened to pat robinson cbn 700 club and when he was starting ministry he went to the lord in prayer and said father give me three things number one give me wisdom number two give me favor number three give me the anointing of the holy ghost i went back in my place of prayer i said oh god give me wisdom give me favor give me the anointing of the holy spirit but i stayed on favor i prayed favor with all my heart when i prayed it and it came i knew it had come when favor is upon your life it speaks if in 24 hours i am not favored i will go for a retreat you can grow in favor just like faith do you believe what i'm telling you yes God has been good to me he has shown me mercy he has shown me grace my assignment now is to see that every one of you come into this realization that you have opened up your heart to support the work of the kingdom you have opened up your heart to see that Jesus Christ is glorified why will he not bless you these are the systems my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil Where you are seated i want you to pray i told you i'm going to lay my hands on all of you the grace that is coming upon your life is the grace for favor some of you are business people please pray in one minute you don't have to kneel just cry before your god Lord, let my life change. Shift me to a new dimension. Don't belittle yourself. Don't allow the devil lie to you while you are listening to me. He says, oh, you are not a preacher. You are not this. Don't, don't, don't listen to that lie. The same Lord is rich unto all. He told Cain, if thou doest well, will your sacrifice not be accepted? You reign, you reign, pray, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Elohim. 
Please pray for your children, for your destiny. You reign, you reign. Hello, him, you reign. You reign, you reign. Hello, him, you reign. You reign, you reign. Hello, him. Lift your voice and pray. Father, a worker is deserving of his wages. I am a partner with this ministry. I'm a partner with the souls that are saved, the lives that are transformed. Are you praying? Shila paruka tozia katabranda gadoziata. Pray. I am a leader in this vision. I am a partner. I am a pillar. Shalabarakato sada brande kete palakatosia. Send me favor, O oh God. Settle me financially, O oh God. Take away financial concerns from my life forever. hallelujah hallelujah before i lay my hands on you i'd like you to vow a vow to god that no matter where you take me to no matter what doors you open me i vow that my heart will remain with you let me tell you this money can take your heart from god oh believe me fame can take your heart away from god all of these mundane things we desire can take away your heart from god it says let it not be that when you have built houses and built these things you say my power and the might of my hand has given me this say but thou shall remember that means you can forget lord i will never forget you no matter how you lift me are you praying lord do not withhold your hand from blessing me from blessing my family from blessing my destiny my heart is ever connected to you i live to serve you i live to love you my life will declare your praise hallelujah one of the hardest graces to receive from my life is the grace for favor i don't know why it is easy to receive the grace for the miraculous it is easy to receive the grace for signs and wonders it is even easy to receive the grace for revelation but there are few people who have been connected to me who have received the grace for favor i've sought this before the lord why why and for some reason i don't know why it continues to be a challenge i it is my prayer listen you see pastor ike and his wife uh is my son and daughter in the gospel that means this ministry you are connected to a mysterious spiritual covenant that you must study and understand 
when God calls people there are thrones that back what they represent on earth and there are graces and covenants that when you connect to if you really understand the import of what you are doing your life will change like day and night it is true I'm about to pray for you can I use this oil please give this is ordinary goya oil please give it to me you can use this to fry chips you can use this to fry chicken this is not what anoints oil does not anoint it is the anointed that anoints oil only anoints because it was anointed and please hear me god is giving you another opportunity if it does not work maybe we'll try it next year again but i i pray that in your heart you will receive this i will give you one minute to cry alone with god and open up your spirit and say god you know that i need this some of you are crying you know that your families and your destinies are at the mercy of this living from hand to mouth it is not that hard it is when the grace the requisite level of grace is upon you you will be surprised thank god for all your business concerns and everything you do but that is nonsense when the grace is not on you you will only struggle the bible says except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city he said the watchman watched but in vain it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he can give his beloved sleep i like you to pray lord i believe that this favor that comes upon me let it speak immediately father in the name of jesus this is ordinary oil but in the name of jesus the christ of god you have so graciously anointed me with this grace and lord freely as i have received this grace is coming upon your people i pray oh god that there will be strange testimonies of open doors let men and women enter into million realms billion realms by your spirit let this grace bring recoveries let this grace call forth help us let this grace bring ideas let this grace bring jobs let this grace bring favor connections in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus and therefore i declare by the power of the holy spirit that as I touch you in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God let this be the beginning I'll lay my hands praise the Lord now please this is what I want you to do um, I don't know how you will be led but once you come I just lay my hands on you go back to your seat blasting in tongues and receiving and prophesying don't keep quiet when we are done, then we can wrap up, have a brief session of counseling, and then we go. In the name of Jesus.